the the myth the myth hyper mythic indeed i'm nebula so today we're gonna watch uh nabby take on ntw i am super hyped for this match i don't know if you are um i i've been like waiting for this match all day unfortunately vp and mouse uh, got postponed this morning, so we're not. We didn't get to cast that game. It's a bummer. I was totally all about the uh, six hours of casting. I thought that was gonna be sick, but looks like perhaps only two or three today. Um, sorry, I had a bit of a. Oh yes. Yes, do that. I don't. Uh, I actually can't see your slides right now. So um, actually, I yeah maybe want to do the intro the, again because I I actually muted my mic. So hey everyone, welcome to TPL Two broadcast. You heard <laughs> Nebula's half of the introduction. Now it's my half. How are you guys doing today? We are doing fine. Just feeling a little <laughs> dumb that I didn't put my my volume. But we are watching Navi versus MTW. Is the vod gonna have me talking to nobody? Yes, for oh, the first nice. two minutes. Clutch. All right. Well. Okay, anyway, we are watching Navi versus MTW. Now, as Lumi mentioned, uh, there were some pretty spectacular games going on in the Dota 2 world recently. Uh, yesterday, Navi played a, a couple matches that were pretty awesome. I recommend you check them out. There's Navi versus DTS, as well as Navi versus... Dare. Dare, yes. Both of those were apparently fantastic matches. I only got to see part of one of them. I did not actually get to watch both of them. I will be watching Navi versus DTS later today. Hopefully, we'll be casting that one a little bit of... Uh, YouTube action there for those of you interested. Yeah, I currently have that slide up. Navi, I can't believe I'm saying this, six and four in their last ten matches. That's cr it's actually crazy to think. Like I think the lowest I've ever seen them get is like eight and two. You know, they have like a bad. That's day a bad week. They, lose, they lose like two games in a row, but that never happens more than like oh, two weeks apart or closer than two weeks apart like if that happens it happens every couple weeks like three to five weeks if anyone's investing to stocks or trying to go into buy lottery tickets this is the time now something is happening right now like the the magic is in the air i don't know man i feel like what's going to happen now is Navi's going to reassert their dominance and win like, like for the next four months just but. crush everybody for two and a half months out of frustration and anger i don't know i i feel like it's kind of like a sleeping giant you don't want to you don't want to make him angry like <laughs> Just keep calm down, buddy. We're gonna have some chicken later. Just don't don't eat me. So Navi does have the first pick here. So Puppy went ahead and banded the banded. He banned the Pandarian Brewmaster, um, who has just been receiving a bunch of bans recently. A lot of respect for Panda since he hit the scene, which is um, something I like to see. I mean, obviously the 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 Chinese teams have been using Panda to pretty great effect, haven't they not? Yeah, they definitely has. Unfortunately, it hasn't been really seen gameplay because it's constantly banned. I'm trying to tap into the game right now. My Dota two. Not responding is what's telling me. I wonder if I quit right here. Um, I believe you're in. still in the game. I don't think I saw you drop. I'm going to go ahead and continue the analysis. Then we have Broodmother. Oh, you have disconnected, so go ahead and rejoin. Yes, I will do that. Thank you for giving me permission to do so. Yes! No problem, buddy. I'm here to allow you to do things. Thank so you. anyway, um, no Chinese censorship on today's cast, bro. So we have... Uh, Broodmother is the first ban for MTW, pretty much an annoying hero that most teams just kind of ban and out of frustration and not wanting to play against that particular hero. Navi Meanwhile goes ahead and bans Invoker with their second pick, or their second ban rather, another annoying hero that most teams just, it's, you have to play completely differently when it comes to a Broodmother. Not, Invoker not quite as much, but um, because of the, the nature of the hero, if you get a little bit behind, it becomes very difficult to stop the onslaught of spells in every single team fight. We have Darkseer as the second ban here for MTW. Um, wow. Again, wow. Okay, rapid fire picks here. We'll get through this real fast. We got a Dark Seer ban as well as an Enchantress ban for MTW. Uh, Navi went ahead and banned Krobolus. So we'd like <laughs> to point this out. Krobolus, shockingly, Navi is 1 and 4 against Krobolus. It's actually the only hero that they just genuinely lose to. Um, so for all of you C pro teams out there or pro teams, if we're playing against Navi, pick Krobolus because apparently they can't beat it. It's um, like literally the only hero they have a bad record against. Well, Puppy will be banning that one. I mean, being a team like Navi, you are okay with picking or playing against any other hero. So, you know, you can use one of your numerous spans. I mean, we definitely seen uh, Puppy 4th and 5th pan, like, random things like Kunga, DK. So they're, they're not... 
they're not uh, hurting for bands, so they you know they bankrupt, no big deal. But they're gonna be up against a profit and a Chen. The pushing is gonna be insane. Now we're gonna get some aura stacking going on with Chen creeps and Beastmaster. This is a this is one really really good draft coming out from Syndrin. Yeah, new Beastmaster looks nice. Now what Nabby what what Puppy did here is he wanted the Lycanthrope, um, apparently. Now to get the Lycanthrope, he had to give away Furion and Shin. Um, there are very few teams Worth it. where you can give Fury and Chin away. Like it, it's just not that seems insane to me, to be honest. That is that is a combo of pushing and and map control that you really is second to almost none. Um, he does go ahead and grab Enigma and Leshrac, so they do have their own pushing power. Obviously, they have a Lycanthrope as a very good carry push. Uh, Enigma very strong pushing with Adelons and Leshrac just strong in general to that Diabolic Now Beastmaster is the third figure from MTW. I like the new Beastmaster skin, by the way. This is actually the first time I've seen it. Yeah, uh, looks pretty boss. Uh, strategically wise, he's picking it for the roar. It's going to be decent against the Lycanthrope when he gets the BKB. going to be epic against that Enigma. I'm looking towards MTW to pick up a Ventral Spirit as well to give you another out against a Black Hole, uh, BKB or not. But if they want to go for another support, that can make sense as well. Tie Hunter, by the way, is still within the pool. Tie Hunter kind of the flavor. As is Windrunner. The, as is Windrunner. Uh, a lot of good supports are still left in the pool. Women can be placed as support for those of you guys that haven't been watching a lot of Dota 2 competitively. Uh, we'll see what uh, Nav is going to surprise us with the 4th and 5th pick. But One thing that we didn't really talk about because we jumped into the pick and ban phase so quickly is that Cinderin, one of the few captains out there that actually picks heroes that no one ever uses. Yeah, well, he's one of the few format-defining captains out there. I mean, he, he picks things that maybe aren't necessarily like crazy innovative, um, but he'll do stuff that a lot of teams maybe haven't done before. Or and forgot then that'll, about. That'll, that'll definitely become popular. Yeah, he, he's, he's capable of picking literally anything. He's definitely on a you know, puppy art style style of where he's going he's gonna to pick things that he knows are good. He's not going to follow whatever everybody else is doing. He's going to figure out what he actually believes is good. And oftentimes he is right, uh, which is why MTW has been having so much success recently. And Cinderin, as a captain, has had so much success in the past. Nice Stalker being the fourth pick here from Navi, and uh, before we switch to pick the man, you saw one of the signature heroes for Navi is that Nice Stalker. It fits her playing style so well. It gives them that very, very good gank, gives them that mid-game dominance. Of course, Nice Stalker not a bad pusher in his own right because he simply run past tower, scares away everyone. Um, Virion and, and Chen included, and allow yeah. your teammate to push down the tower. Now it's going to be somewhat difficult because Night Stalker usually could run past the tower and, and again scare people away, but against Chen creeps uh, who could threaten to stun them, slow him, it might be a little bit more difficult. Comboed with the Roar as well, it'll be very easy for them to pick him off on that dive. I mean, Roar has a long range, it allows. Um, it also has a long stun time, obviously, to allow Chen to get in position with those creeps, as you mentioned, as well as the pig. Slow Night Stalker down just a little bit, maybe just enough to set up some some uh, you know net action or or centaur stomp, whatever you whatever you need in that particular particular vein. Of course, with the Fearing and the Chen, I feel like they're going to be more of the aggressive pushing, especially against the Lycanthrope uh, Night Stalker. Although it can be difficult sometimes uh, to push really heavily against a lot of summons. I mean, they have Lycanthrope so far. They have the Eidolons. The Eidolons aren't fantastic at anti pushing. Um, they're mostly just straight pushing as far as uh, as, as opposed to countering. Um, but they have a bunch of picks. They have, have two picks left here. I, I would expect a Windrunner to be grabbed here, to be honest. Um, though with Fearing, maybe they're going to put Fearing in that top lane. Or perhaps mid-solo Fearing. Would they do that? Yeah, I mean, you know, Quantic or ex-Quantic always love to run that mid-solo Fearing. It's definitely a very strong choice. I'm expecting a little bit more different. You, you went for the safe pick. and I, Oh, Venomaster wasn't my guess. I thought it was going to be something like Shadow Demon or Pugna. Uh, they offer their own right, but Cinder is going to go for Venomancer here. The warts as a defensive purpose. I mean, I feel like that hero never really do enough. Let's see if Cinder is going to put him on semi carry row, because support Venomancer usually just falls behind him very, very quickly. Well, they have a Chin in the jungle. Um, Beastmaster presumably is going to get a solo lane. Uh, if he's not a solo lane, he will be the dual lane with Vino or with with the bottom lane. So he's going to be a farmer either way. Um, Fearing likewise is going to probably have a solo lane by nature of having that chin. I guess you could put Vino and Fearing in the same lane, but that seems very bad to me. Yeah. Uh, you really want Fearing to get a lot of quick levels for that TP, and and you also want to level up, uh, get a point of sprout. You want to level those trains as well, so you can get some some pushing going on. So I presume Vino is going to be support here, but if they pick a support as their fit, they can put Vino um, or Beastmaster in a dual lane. And then that would allow Vino to get some farm, but not really the solo <laughs> XP that he typically wants. I, I think he. I think we're gonna see a support Van Manser, and uh, I think so too. To my wool, uh, he's he's gonna have to put points in the wards, which is not bad by any means, but that's gonna make his ganking and team fight potential a little bit lackluster. Uh, but this is Cinderin. Uh, we are expecting something good and crazy from him, and let's see if he's gonna deliver up. Uh, by the way, I was MTW. Say Pugna would have been awesome. What's that? 
I was going to say Pugna, that Pugna pick would have been sick. I mean, well, I mean, the Pugna ward is a little bit weak to the Wolves, uh, but Banish is just so good against Lycanthrope. Whoever he's focusing, you could just, you know, disrupt or decryptify to be exact, and then he can't really do anything. Of course, he's really, really good in terms of counter pushing. He does some big magical damage, so I, I kind of like him, and Cinderin's one of the few captains that do pick him up. But um, going back to Radiant, I wonder what Cinderin is going to pick in terms of carry. So far, I mean, you can carry with a Prophet, but that's... That's rather weird. Uh, that's a that's a questionable carry. Yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure about that. I mean, Syrian obviously does get a decent amount of damage, but he's not a carry per se. Um, he just can do a lot of damage. That's not the same thing. Um, there's a lot there's there's a difference between a DPS hero and a carry, though. I don't know, people, man. People just kind of tie the two. That together. seven that seven one rise enchantress that was pretty carry. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, <laughs> not a DPS hero, right? I mean, yeah, yeah Agstic throwing out big time impetus. Anyway, we see a Storm Spirit as the last pick here from Navi. Very interesting lanes they're going to end up having here. So, um, Lycan or Enigma will have to be in the jungle with these lanes because you have um, Night Stalker who's probably going to be in a solo lane. Uh, Storm Spirit likewise probably wants a solo lane. Leshrac probably wants to be a farmer in his lane, which means there's a lot enough XP to go around, which means one of these two has to jungle. Yep. I completely agree, and, and jungle can be easily shut down, and we're going to see a Dragonite here by Cinderin. Uh, not the most popular hero in the European scene. It's a huge splash back in the Asian scene, but that is a different scene. Let's see how the Radiant is going to be laning this. Uh, we're going to see a DK Venno, right? Ye yes, probably. I would like to point out DK goes along the theme of wanting to push very aggressively. I mean, they yep. have a Furion, a Beastmaster, yep. a Chinon. Yep, yep. And a uh, Vino, so clearly they want to push very hard. And DK is one of the best. He's a, he's a carry, but he's a pushing carry. He's not like a he's not a he, yes. He can be really really strong and really in the late game if he gets an assault curse and a abyssal blade and a bunch of other crap. Yeah, obviously he's going to be very strong. Um, but he's typically one of those mid game kind of take down towers with his dragon. Abyssal form. blade DK really. Really? Well, I was just list I was just listing okay. items. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you get a Visible Blade as your sixth item, it does give you a lot of damage in a second stun, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you already have an Assault Curious, a BKB, some other things, I'm sure it's good. Yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Cinder, <laughs> Cinder is going to be playing the Prophet here, and uh, he is... Well, no, don't know what he's going for. I like the, the start of his build, though. He's going to go for Urn, and that's going to give him a very strong ganking into a pushing combo. Kebab is going to be playing the Chen here. Uh, Effing Mad is going to be on uh, Venomancer. Shastika is going to be the, on the Dragonite. And then we have Funzi on the Beastmaster. Funzi always goes on the long lane, so I expect him to do so this game as well. Yeah, for Navi, we have Arzart playing that Leshrac. We do have Misery, the stand-in. King stand-in, now that Black has found himself an actual team, uh, is going to be playing that Night Stalker. We have Dindy rocking that Storm Spirit. It looks like he's actually going to be up on the top lane farming. Light of Heaven is going to be on that Enigma. Of course, Light of Heaven is the hard lane solo, so I expect him to be at bottom lane. And Lycanthrope will be played by Puppy, although his name is backwards. What a jerk. Um, is going to be in the jungle, is my guess. So it looks like potentially we're going to have a roaming Leshrac, a support Leshrac being played Marcel, now obviously or Arzart. Uh, Arzard obviously does play a very strong support Lesh. Uh, it's something they like to do a lot, so I I'm going to assume that he's going to be a going for the gangs early on. I'm looking around on the Navi, and do they have any Sentry Wards? No, they do not, and this is one of the best ways to counter the enemy jungle. Throw down two Observer Wards, and well, what is Lycan going to do now? He's forced to go into the enemy jungle, but that is probably not a good place to go to if you're going to get ganked all day by Venomancer. Especially against a Chin, Vino, Furion, that, or that, that's a little rough. I mean, Venomancer is really strong at, at helping out gangs when you have those those uh, the summons from the, uh, or rather the, the units from the Chin. Man, that was rough. So we have a uh, solo Beastmaster on the bottom. It looks like Furion will be solo middle, so Cinderin is going to be going up against the dual lane, apparently, of Misery and Arzar. This is going to be a really interesting lane. I think it's going to be rough uh, for Cinderin as they start to level up here. For the viewers that are following the TPL, MTW is currently the leader of the DPL, undefeated so far. Uh, let's and see I if Navi could actually uh, get the first scratch on them. I think on Gosu Gamers, they're listed... What, what's their current rank right now? I'm actually not 100% sure. Should be pretty high. Number yeah, three, I, I thought I was about to say they were three, but I actually think it's X Gosu. X Gosu. Oh, by the way, got picked up by Quantic today. Oh, did they? Yep. Man, Quantic's all over the place. I like that. I, I think that's a good choice by uh, by Quantic picking up X Ghost. They've been playing very well. They've kind of done the complexity thing where they just rolled out of the, the American trenches and started beating a lot of teams. Well, so. I mean, I, 
I can't fall for Quantic being all over the place. That, that's not their fault. That's more Oh, no, no, totally. But yeah. I'm glad that they picked up another team very yep. quickly. Um, it's always good to have all the, you know, as many Dota sponsors as you can in the in the, uh, in the the actual scene. See, a nice initiation here on Funzy, just getting a lot of harass on Light of Heaven. A Light of Heaven takes a decent amount of damage to do so, but it looks like Puppy is going to go ahead and rotate to that bottom jungle, as is Arzart going to come down to help. And it, actually, Misery comes down as well, so they just concede the top tower completely and have Dindy flying up in the middle now. So they're going to go ahead and do a four-man push strategy since they did war ward that top jungle. I think this is a great choice. I'm very surprised that Puppy didn't go how at level two. I mean, that's that was his thing when he played uh, way back when Farm for Fame, uh, when his teammate with Kuroki. That was a long time ago for anyone that remember. But went for a five-man aura push strat, five Vanguard. Now that, that's that's a long game. But he went for a jungle Lycan, and Lycan wasn't a hero back then. Uh, but how level two choice was his skill choice? But no, he's got a quick tier one tower. They traded tier ones. Who does this favor, by the way? Um, I think this actually favors uh, uh, Radiant because they have the the units specifically designed to do this. Now they are going to trade towers, so maybe they're actually losing some of their their team's pur purpose by just trading towers. But I think with that quick farm, those heroes, since they're specifically meant to do that, may be able to just push into the base easier. Um, that said. There is the 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 double. It's a double bladed sword because you are taking your team's basic strength and having both teams doing it. You know. Yeah, I mean, see what well, I'm saying? they're gonna get the. T I, I do see what you're saying, but tier two is gonna go down way quicker. I mean, on the on the top lane, Raiden haven't even seen the tier two yet. So, and this tier two yeah. is gonna be going right down right now. So, that is gonna be a like big Nobby goal. Yeah. Don't know how to push aggressively early on. They're pretty used to doing this, so it's not like they're gonna have any kind of. Oh my gosh, what's going on? They're gonna be completely cool, collected, and execute this to the best that they can. So. You know, it is what it is. It looks like Navi, Puppy is going to go ahead and run into the jungle here, perhaps. Get himself a little bit of levels. Maybe just try and level up a bit. Hey. I mean, he's a Lycanthrope. He's not exactly the best pusher level, too. If if you are, uh, if your jungle got worn off, no problem. Push down two towers and then farm in their jungle. New strat, <laughs> new meta. Nothing. I guess. It's going to give Funzy. Now Misery is actually going to farm down bottom against Funzy. Now, Funzy uh, does have a little pocket here. He's got that bottle, but Misery, meanwhile, already level, almost level three, so. Um, keeping up pretty high level despite the fact that they did push a big group here. Now, through all of this, Dindy was farming up in the middle. He is level 4. Um, he's got himself some bottle and boots of speed as well, coming uh, presumably as soon as that chicken gets back to base. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Sindarin's got his Urn of Shadows. MTW was not, uh, you know, surprised or, you know, panicking because they definitely could have had the Prophet TP in Summon Treans and try to slow down the push if that's what they wanted. Clearly, that's not the case. Sindarin says, okay, you know what? You're going to have two tier, uh, towers on the bot. I'm going to get a farm Prophet. We're going to have a farm Dragon. Now, he's been free farming on the top lane here. 23 creeps kills in four minutes. That's six a minute. Misery, by the way, might be a little bit trouble. That Gale does hit. Will the slow be enough though? Misery down to half HP. We are going to see Orange coming in. I do think Misery will be going down. One of the downside of, well, pushing a tower like bosses is... You're, you're, you are very far yes, in the lane when you do decide far. to farm, so you're very exposed to that. Uh, that is the allied jungle star, despite yes. the fact that Puppy is hanging out in, uh, who is now level 3. I, I like it's going to be a little bit nerfed here because of this. Now, he does get the quick gold from the two towers, so that does help him out a little bit, but his actual XP and levels is going to be a bit lower. Puppy does... Er, Lycanthrope never really has an issue with getting gold. That's not, that's not his deal. His biggest problem tends to be getting levels quick enough. Well, sometimes you have trouble with getting uh, in, in getting gold, but in this game, he clearly does not. As a gold difference chart right now, well, actually, a lot closer than you might think. Uh, it's back to zero, but Radiant is up by, or down by a tower, so Radiant simply farming a lot better. And as you might imagine, DK, who's running away from Lester at this point, he's getting the free farm. Uh, of course, the... Uh, the Prophet was also getting free farm mid. Will we get a pull here? And it looks like we will splurf. That is gonna hit. Then he's taking a little bit of tower shot, but Shastika just so damn tank with the string treads already finished. Looks like they wanna turn around and go for a kill on AA. AA in a little bit of trouble. Dendi is invisible at this point. Will he get Ooh. off the stun? The creeps. Not oh, on Radiant no. side. Effing Matt actually blocks Shastika coming uh. into the jungle there with his own Veno Ward. That was a big mistake. It prevented him from getting in range for the stun. Though. Um, it looks like he actually didn't have mana. Did he throw a fire there? I think he was actually had no mana anyway, right? Well, he could have switched shreds uh, to intelligence, because... Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. So, yeah, a little bit of a mistake there from Venomancer dropping that down. Venomancer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing that, and people are going to keep yelling at me. <laughs> then the invisible on the mid lane. No level 6 just yet. These guys staying too close together, so they're not going to get ganked. So far, I mean, first blood went to the Radiant, uh, and of course, uh, they are farming a lot better, and that's why the go chart very even. Oh, we see an point. initiation here on middle on center. We have a pull from that invisible Dindy. Light of Heaven comes with a stun, and they do end up getting that kill. Uh, Light of Heaven even up picking that one up. And he's got a soul Ring already done, and another 1,200 gold because of those quick towers. 
Uh, Puppy meanwhile in middle's already got his medallion of courage coming in. And it looks like that middle tier one may go down as well, though. Chin is there trying to slow this down. He has got himself a steer hell caller just trying to kill creeps, and I think this tower is going to survive. Yeah, so not a Vlats rush as we've seen it uh, from a lot of Lycan player, but a uh, Helm of Dominator rush. Not Helm. Medallion Courage medallion. rush. And I think that's a great choice considering that you do have so many creeps and I guess Roshan killing potential. Picking up the early medallions will allow you to go into the Roshan at any time and basically take it for free. So I, I do like that I have a choice at the start. Yeah, it also does, of course, a bunch of damage when you go into ulti form as you're chasing, uh, removing their armor and surge that you're going to really decimate through a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot lot of of heroes, rather, as he's it's going to take him, since it, it looks like this game is going to be mostly played in the early game, he just wants to get damage up as quickly as he can. He already has a lot of damage, obviously, he's a lacking throw, uh, but I think getting in that as quickly as possible ensures that he's going to be most effective as quickly as he can be, rather than going for more of a mid-late game build. Five players in the mid lane for MTW, two teleported in, and it looks like they want this tier one tower. And you talked about how Dragonite is a pushing carry. He's popping that ultimate form. The Elder Dragon form at level one will do extra damage to the tower. You have Treans, you have Chen Creeps, you have the Aura from Fundy. No, no Aura just yet. He's going for the call build. Uh, so they're going to bring down the tier one tower for free. AA walks in, eats up a roar, and that's going to be a free kill. These Eidolons is going to be free food as well. How much gold can they earn from it? Now they're going to mow down the Squeak Wave. I think they could go for tier two now. Yes, they totally can. That dragon form is only halfway um, over on uh, black, halfway from being being used up, so they got plenty of time to go for this tier two. Of course, the corrosive breath doing twenty damage a second on towers is quite a bit. It really does cut him down pretty quickly. Though it looks like uh, puppy's gonna go ahead and cover from the jungle here. He gets immediately stunned. I think he's gonna go down. Yep, there's a venomous gale and a fire breath from Soxka. And again, that kill misery gets treated in as well. It looks like they may get him though. He is a little bit faster. It is nighttime right now, I believe. Yep, he is gonna go down nonetheless. Those are two more kills. For MTW, and I think MTW really starting to look good here. It's four to one already. They did give those two early towers, but they made him back up with the two tier ones, and now it looks like they are going to get the tier two. Though the dragon form is now out. For anyone that's joining us, guys, we're eight minutes into the game. Tier two threatening to be brought down. Funzy might be a little bit trouble. There's a zip and a pull. Dendi is going to be okay, but Funzy's going to get sent back. Will he survive? Yes, he will. Whoa. Level one holy persuasion does take a while, but it got up there. Medallion courage was dropped on him by Puppy. Uh, but they defended that one for Navi, and that was key because Lycanthrope is going to have time to hit level 6. We we're going to have Enigma try to hit his black hole. No, he's got the black hole. Misery is going to try to get himself a couple level. Nice talker, by the way, level 5. Because of how wacky this game is, and there's like, you know, concentrated push from both games, the level is just so low. Yeah, we're eight minutes in, and the heroes are just now getting like five and six. And DK does just hit seven, but he doesn't get initiated on it. Looks like he will go down. He is quite tank, but I believe there's going to be enough. No, it looks like he will get away. He magic doesn't end up cracking wand. that magic wand and yep. manages to survive. Though I don't, I'm not sure he actually needed it, but he still does survive. So I can throw craft his ultimate there. End up not getting a kill. That's a bit unfortunate for Navi. Um, yeah, nine minutes in, and we've already had a pretty pretty chaotic early game though. With these picks, it kind of was always destined to happen. Uh, <laughs> Just in general, especially when you're playing, you know, Navi versus MTW. I mean, if you're gonna give away a Chen and a Prophet, you, you do expect some some pushing Absolutely. going on. And of course, Dragon Eye as a as a pick is gonna help him out. I do again like the uh, Soul Ring choice on Shastika. Really, when you're pushing, one thing you really need is mana. Shastika not really worried about HP given that he is Dragon Eye, so uh, he's gonna have Soul Ring to really support those uh, hyper beams that he's throwing out. Hyper beams. That is one thing they could be called. Uh, on bottom here, Misery is hanging out in the jungle. It He's a dragon knight. Time. So he Get can it? totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Navi's dying mid. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Puppy did die up in middle land. I did miss that. My bad. Anyway, that is a kill on the Lycan, though. It's actually kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, taking down Lycan yet again. Now, Misery is on bottom. He's going after Kebop. We see a ball in from Diddy. Looks like they will get Kebop uh, in as a rebuttal kill, though. That's not quite as good, I think. Uh, is taking down the Lycanthrope. They are going to go ahead and go middle. That DK is back in Dragon Form. They're going to hit this a couple times. It's going to go down pretty quickly. Uh, so Tier 2 Tower goes down. We now have a 3 to 1 advantage. Though that top Tier 1 Tower is taking a lot of damage from Arzart and Light of Heaven now, dropping this uh, Diabolic Edict, and that tower will go down as well. So a lot of tower trading here early on. It feels like these two teams are just not interacting with each other. It's like, yeah, you know what? You can have our tower. We'll have yours. It's all good. This is the new Dota meta game. Everybody just runs at towers and never fights each other. They have like little confrontations, but by level like by minute fifteen, all the towers on the map are dead. It's and like it's, it's it's like the new easy mode. All right, we start the game with fifteen thousand gold. Let's go. Everybody gets a bunch of free gold. Let's <laughs> yep. go. go. Uh, yeah, that is pretty sick. Um, up top, Arzar and Light of Heaven not really backing up off this push too much. They're going to try and maybe force a TP, though. There's going to be a gang on bottom. Misery's trying to run away. I think he's going to get sprouted in. Yes, he does. Soxka is haste, so like Night Soccer will not be getting away. He silences him. It doesn't really matter. They can chase after him, it looks like. Oh, actually, that uh, did wear off, but they still stick him, pick him up with the uh, axes, though. Vino actually gets that kill. 
Yeah, MTW again joining S5 on the bot lane. Chen does have one of the best pushing creep in the game, which is the Dark Troll Wardle. Summoning those skeletons, Treant being a summon and max at this point as well. Medallion Courage will allow MTW to go for that Roshan if they decide to do so. Navi says, okay, let's play, keep on playing this game. You push our towers, we'll push yours. Seems like the Radiant's gonna check it out and try and defend this one. Tower is in nine range. Are they gonna go for it? Venom Master comes in. And just scares everyone away. And the tower gets destroyed by Enigma. That was a close tonight. Effing Matt is effing Matt right now. Trying to get a kill on Light of Heaven. We're going to drop off the roar. Light of Heaven does have the Black Hog. Is he going to drop it right here? He, I don't think he should. But it's probably going to... Ooh. Ooh. Actually, he might. So right now we have a TP in from Fury, and he will go down. We go. I'm dropping Urn instantly and get the attack on there. So Navi's actually doing a really good job of kind of taking a strategy that MTW has, which is push towers very aggressively and get a lot of that early gold advantage, and just counteracting it by charging after the enemy's towers as well and just trying to trade as many as possible. Um, you asked me earlier who I thought that actually was an advantageous for, and I think it is in fact Navi. Uh, I do think they they actually benefit more because their team isn't really designed to take down towers that quickly. Um, so if they're trading towers, I think that's, that's totally what they want to do, right? I, I'm not so sure, because, I mean, the two losses they occurred yesterday against DT Sundir, that's how they lost. I mean, they got a couple of towers, and they're, they're no, by no means ahead of the tower, but what they fell down behind is, is the kill count. That's how Navi loses. They are just so far down in terms of kill count where the enemy just get better items and EXP. So far, it's not really happening that far, that quickly right now for the Radiant side, but Radiant is leading by 2k gold, and I, I do presume they have better items. Yeah, but I think in one of those games, Navi was suicide pushing towers against a team who was getting kills. Like, they That's were trading true. a lot of kills to get those towers. In this sense, they're going to lose these towers. Like, Navi is going to lose towers because there's a Furion, a Chin, a DK. Like, those are going to go down. So what they're doing is they're taking the strength of, of Radiant and mitigating it by getting their own towers in, in exchange. Now, Light of Heaven does get initiated on. He's going to go down almost immediately there. So this is uh, if, they continue time, to right? if, they, if they continue to keep dying, then it is going to be a problem. Now, I think it's Rosh, Rosh time, time first. Yeah. Indeed, they do go ahead and rotate and go for Rosh. Now, if they pick up Rosh and get another kill, then yes, I do think they'll go for Rex. Uh, Arzart, meanwhile, just trying to pick up as many levels as he can. He's now level 7 and just continues farming it up. It looks like Leshrac maybe played as the carry, maybe a, a carry here, just to, to get as much Lightning Storm as possible, just to slow down the push along with the Diabolic Edict. And that is his plan. He's got level 4 Lightning right now. He is definitely the most important hero at this point here for the Dire Squad, because the Lightning Storm is exactly what they need. They are trading a lot of damage uh, on that Roshan for that top tower, though. Top tower is just... Losing HP very rapidly. Aegis is going to get picked up. Storm comes in. He picks up the Aegis. Dendi, you are too good, my friend. Roar was used. So he's going to zip out. Like, What's you up, actually bro? missed it, but he also got the last hit on Roshan. Wow. Dendi Balding got the kill with his attack. Wow. Obviously, he can attack while ball lightning. Yeah, so he got an attack command in while balling and grabbed the Aegis. That was boss play from Dendi right there. That was big time. Um, that that goes from being that is a huge swing. I, we really can't stress that enough, to be honest. That that is a free tower worth of gold in terms of monetary. That is an Aegis not on the Dragonite who could have just tanked everything. And that is also a gank on effing Mad Like and popping his ultimate with no fear. But he's gonna get sent back. Kebab is gonna be next choice. One trap here. Pocky on misery. Will that survive? Kebab will be okay. No, he's gonna go down regardless. Hand of God comes in just to lay a little bit. Effing Mad TP's in immediately. He gets silenced though. He's in a little bit of trouble. Splitter of that is gonna miss as well. And is that? it no Cinderin gets caught out black hole just for him and that's gonna bring Cinderin down and lycan is right next to that tier two they could eat up that tower uh, the venom answer does die as well dendy in a little bit of trouble he's out of mana out of hp but dragon and losing hp very rapidly as well dragon i end up going down no profit buys back he comes in he wants arzar he's gonna get arzar now they're gonna focus on puppy puppy's gonna go down as well carnage happening everywhere multiple buybacks who came out ahead in that team fight I gotta say MTW did. Now, now here's the problem. They really focused after the DK. They spent a lot of spells and a lot of energy trying to kill him, but he's just too tank. He already has a Hood of Defiance. They have the heals from the from the uh, the Chin, and I believe one of them has a Mecha. Yes, there was a Mecha on Chin as well. And of course, he does have that magic one, so he can crack that at any point he wants. And he just has too much tank. They, they, they focused a lot on him, and they burned everything they possibly could. Didn't end up getting the kill, and that cost them all of their lives. Like, they didn't even set out to get the goal that they were going after in that battle. They didn't get the tower either, so despite that big kill on Roshan uh, that they did steal there uh, in Dindy's pretty, pretty spectacular play, they ended up giving that back almost immediately with four deaths, there, or three deaths. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the go chart. Cool thing is that it does show the uh, kills. It seems like it was a four for four exchange. A couple of guys did buy back on either side, uh, and of course, MTW being closer to their own base had a better reinforcement point right next to the tier two. They want the last tier two on the top lane here, and Navi says, "Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's play that trading game again." Yeah, actually, it was a three for three trade, but okay. Anyway, Sasuke continuing to farm it up. He now has his own headdress. It looks like. 
Um, interesting. He's, he's picking up a Hedris himself. He's going to make himself a pipe yep. pretty quickly here. So we're going to see a, a really, really fast pipe. That tells me that they probably are going to start diving into Raxus pretty soon. I think that's the plan. Um, when you pick up a pipe that quickly, it means that you're looking for team fights. I mean, if you if you go back with pipe really early, then you go farm. Uh, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> so we'll see. Storm Spirit yeah. picks up an invis. No, he his, he has invis, but he is smoked up at this point. They won the dragon eye. Dragon eye. Will he pour it out? Yes, he does. That drew the TP scroll and a storm Spirit. This means that uh, of course MDW does have momentary advantage at the mid lane, but that doesn't mean too much considering there's no tower to push and there's no rush on to kill. Right now in this map of Dota, it's like a bear land there's nothing between the two bases yeah we have a necromicon has now been completed on beastmaster so we're getting a little bit more summons here on mtw and they're starting to get a little bit more fearsome in their push potential uh meanwhile cindered himself has got himself a staff of wizardry as well so we're going to see mass necro books here we got a necro on profit we have a necro on the beastmaster do we have anybody else going for necros we do not look like the arcane boots are on that venomancer or venomancer um, DK, meanwhile, obviously getting that headdress. Who's the other here that could get one? Uh, Chin. Chin has got the mecha. I would think that he wouldn't mind getting a necro book, but he's got no book, no money for it right now. He definitely does not. Uh, right now, money is uh, precious. Uh, I mean, it's odd to say that against a pushing team, you know, money is always plentiful, but when there's no tower to push down, we're 18 minutes in the game. This is uh, farming time in a jungle, farming time in lane, and whatever kills you get, that is your new uh, kind of income. And uh, so both yeah. teams cannot die at this point. Yeah, if you actually look at the level advantage, it's slightly in Radiant's favor right now. We got a level 11 DK uh, compared to the level 10 NS, to level 10 Storm Spirit, but there's also a 10 Prophet and a 10 Beastmaster. Uh, only Chen is um, and Chen and Venor are behind as far as that goes, so they're pulling them down just a little bit. Uh, Light of Heaven ends up actually being the fattest one, despite uh, ours aren't getting all that farm time. He only got 45 lasses, whereas Light of Heaven already has 81, 65 on that Misery, 69 on Puppy. Uh, we got 84 on DK. Of course, he got a lot of free farm up top, and as you mentioned, he did get a lot of kills very quickly. I'm um, an 80 on uh, on the profit himself too, so. Yeah, of course, profit's ultimate. Pretty hacks when it comes to farming. Just like oh oh oh. Okay, four more, four more CS. Or four yeah, this, is one of the, this is one of the few situations, uh, as far as game states go, where it's totally okay to spam your ultimate and yep. just for farm and to push the lanes. Um, typically, you want to save that to try and get gangs off with it, because it's a very strong nuke if used properly. Um, but if you're just trying to keep lanes pushed out and go after towers and, and get farm that, as you mentioned, is incredibly precious when the game state is such, uh, it's going to be really good here. Dendi is going to see Cinder, and the question is, will he be able to get the kill? Remnant should be dropped first, uh, but he's waiting for one teammate, and it's going to zip. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Interesting choice to start out with the ball lightning. Um, there he finally does. Oh, he's Dendi. Actually, we shouldn't question Dendi. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing. Dendi's kind of a boss nerd. Um, Dendi's kind of like the best Dota 2 player ever. Why are we? Yeah, he him? actually is the best Dota player player in the world. So uh, we're kind of stupid. But that said, you should have. No, you did. You did it perfectly. No, he, he's so that, good. He's so good. Calm down. Dendi is so good. Tower denied in the mid lane. No, it's not going to be the line. Not like and picks up the last tier two on the map as well as DK on the top. So at this point, what happens? I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have no idea. As well. I've These not seen a game like this. Very, there's not a whole lot of times you see a team like just balls the wall pushing and the other team being smart enough to balls the wall push in other lanes. Uh, you don't often see all of the outer tier towers down by 19 minutes, but that's where we're at right now. Um, so what I expect is MTW to gather and go for it. Um, Roshan is not back up yet, and he's not going to be up till I think, 26 or 27. I actually missed, I think it was 27 or 17 when that happened. Might have been earlier than that. Uh, either way, he's not going to be up for a little while. So I think this is they're going to be their best chance. I mean, they don't want to wait to make this game go any longer. There's a Storm Spirit, a Night Stalker, a Leshrac who's been farming, and a, and a, uh, a Lycanthrope on another team. So they don't want to let this turtle too long. They do well, have I mean, a strongly presence. I think they want to go for it while they have a, you know... There's all a, of their heroes in their prime. There's a decent argument that they could wait for a little bit longer because they do have a Dragonite. He definitely can. I mean, he's a different hero when level 16 is there. So, sure. I mean, that is an argument for him to get some farm. Now, against a Bling Dagger that just picked up on the Enigma, against a Storm Surge that could get only stronger, Misery, Lycan, like you talked about. Not too sure if that's the best choice. We are going to see counter Necro books here coming in from Lycanthrope. Ooh, as he I is. like this. Yeah, I like it a lot. I mean, BKB is going to be nice, but... Really, between all the stuns and disable, he's not going to do too much BKB or not. Of course, I'm talking about the roar and all the physical DPS. Uh, but you got to keep in mind that the Necrobook can be stolen by Chen. So that could definitely be working against you. Yeah, so we have two Necrobooks completed on the on the Sentinel side. Though, actually, no, it's not actually completed. There's a Staff of Wizardry to hang out with that Belt of Giant Strength on Profit. He also has the Point Booster, so I guess theoretically he could not finish the Necrobook, but he's going to make a Necrobook. Um, <laughs> he might be going for Axe. 
It wouldn't be yeah. too bad in this case. We have a Jim Atrucite on this Venomancer as well, so he's going around Venomancer. trying to counter for it. Venomancer. But unfortunately, he's going to get fined by Dindy, and Dindy does have double damage, which means the effing Mad will be going down here, and then that will be the death of that Jim already. And Dindy doesn't actually have a thing. He's got upset on his TP scroll to pick that up. MTW now he's going to get might be going for it. That that is not a buyback. Usually would do it. Yeah, they are going for it, like you said. They want to win right now. Absolutely, I, I think it's a good choice. They could have waited, perhaps, to maybe finish uh, the Necrobook on Cinderin or something like that to get one more item up uh, that they wanted, but they feel like they have enough, and they have this early game strength, and they have a Chin and a Fearing, so they gotta do this. They do go ahead and start off with a, a lot of harassment on the tower. The tower gets down to about half HP, just a little bit over half HP. Uh, unfortunately, Chin's army is basically gone now. He's gonna have to go into the jungle and find a little bit more as uh, that uh, Wild well, <laughs> Kim Wartu goes ahead and starts the tornado. The Embanado getting a lot of damage here. Misery does get caught, and there's also a roar, some action. They're focusing a lot on the tanker. I think it's a poor choice. Might have been blinks in with a nice black hole, but he gets immediately hit, and he looks like he will go down. We see a firebird taking a bunch of damage on all of Navi. Misery continuing to survive. Uh, Puppy looks like going to be the focus of choice next. Nope, they're just kind of, they're not actually focusing anybody. They're just hitting random heroes left and right. It looks like no, nope, none of them are going to die. Are you kidding? Like a throw does go down here. So finally, somebody on Navi goes down, but I think they could have picked up a lot more there. And Misery somehow survives. It's very low. He's gonna go down right now. There was a buyback from Enigma after he died. He does buy back as well. So that's two buyback from Navi. Will that defend? Yes, that will. Two whole bunch of death and a couple buyback. MTW says we're happy with what we have so far. We're gonna push out top and bot, get a little bit more farm, buy some items. Yes, Prophet did finish that acceptor yep. instead Darn. of the Necrobook. I like that. I think that was I think that was a change of heart yes, because he has the, the belt of giant strength. There's no way that you're just going to randomly buy a belt of giant strength. It's not exactly a cost effective strength item for that exact price. Just about. I mean, it's like 75 more. You can just get the bracer. Yep. So um, he was definitely going to make an error. He changed his mind. Now he can still finish the necro. Obviously, there's no reason that he wouldn't be able to still do that. Uh, he just decided that ag scepter is going to be too too important. And I think it's a good choice. Um, now the one thing, the one thing that I feel MTD really did wrong there, they just didn't focus. There wasn't a communication. They started focusing misery. They figured out he was too tank. People started to split off, hit other things. They could have killed AA very quickly. They could have easily taken down. Um, uh, it's it's so dangerous uh, to faster. It's so dangerous to focus fire against the Nigma with the blink dagger though. Uh, although you know it didn't do too much with the blink, uh, the Nigma black hole because it got immediately canceled. And I love MTW's choice to push immediately. You know the black hole is down on the cooldown. You are yes. getting some decent levels on your Dragonite. I think Dragonite at this point should just level up level two Dragon Form. Yes, I understand that level one Dragon Form does more to buildings, but he's if you're hitting buildings, you already won the fight against a team like yes, Navi. You exactly. need splash. You need. AOE. I think the splash is actually. Yeah. I agree. Mo mo more often than not, it's it's right to not level it up. But the fact that they've already got the towers, and if they get the tower exactly right, oh, they're this already pipe! Oh my god! Every here we go. We go and crack the pipe and run in there. What are you gonna do about that? Our our Zart? Uh uh. You gonna find your little nukies? It don't do nothing, bro. Getting this tier three tower is gonna go down pretty quickly here. Oh, Pipe is down now, so this time is to Lightning Storm up. They do get the tower, they're gonna back off just a little bit. Wait for more Cute Wave to come in here. Eidolons are in uh, pairs of six. Is that, is that even right? Pairs of six. Misery gets Pair stunned up as he's there's a gale. Venomancer drops his ultimate onto Hero. They're gonna go on Misery. Misery gets war. Misery's gonna go down. He's healing up. Storm comes in right now. And so it's a like and like and focusing. Hand of God comes down. They're gonna focus on Dendi. No, Dendi's still alive right now. Out of mana at this point. Puppy's gonna run out just fine. Split up. Not hitting on too many. Dendi somehow is alive. He is just too good. He's gonna sit back in like nothing ever happened. Light of Heaven gets focused. Gets stunned. MTW just losing damage very rapidly. Can they kill Light of Heaven? Light of Heaven is gonna survive. Survive as well. A split is gonna hit again. Wow. Man, they keep focusing so much on misery. Misery is so tank right now that actually it took him forever to get him down. He has Vanguard. He has a cloak, and he's got treads. He's got that urn. He's got too much HP for them to be focusing him. For some reason, they keep going after the Night Stalker, who I don't think is the primary concern. They could take out the art style, or you take out the the less track, You take out the Enigma. Take out the low HP heroes, right? Get the Dindy. You get to stun him. He doesn't have a lot of Dindy. HP. Kill him. Stop letting him jump around all over the battle. Lycanthrope, meanwhile, doesn't have a lot of HP either. They keep going after, I think, the wrong hero. This game is just simply too fast paced. A team fight won. No time for anyone to heal up. They're going to go right into Roche Pit. Radiant, of course, they do know. They're grabbing what they can and they're going to come right back here. And with How and Minus Armor, they are going to try to bring down Roshan very quickly. Enigma Black Hole <laughs> is up. Dendi back to a lot of mana at this point. 2100 gold. They are going to scout out the Radiant team coming in. And it looks like they are going to get the Aegis. If Dendi gets the Aegis right now, oh my goodness, he does. And it looks like Effing Man is going to be the first one to fall down here. No, they're going to go for the Chen. Chen is silenced. Chen is going to get melted here. And now, our 
Hard side. Will he get brought down? Yes, he can. No! A four man split off! He is too good! Cinder is gonna get exploded. They're gonna focus on Denny. Denny does not care. He does have the Aegis of Immortal. And now Funzy down to half HP. Effing Matt down to half HP. And it looks like they're gonna keep chasing. It looks like Shaska helps out here. Pops a pipe here. Stormstar will find Funzy. Funzy goes down. Stormstar is gonna be going into the Dragonite next. Dragonite gets pulled. And he's gonna go down as well. Lycanthrow gets up a triple kill. Eek. Eek, that did not go well for MTW. There was actually an invis rune on the bottom there, and Venomancer or Venomancer did not scout the rune. He actually walked past it and walked all the way in there. They had no idea the Venom that the invis rune was there until he already got into the into the rosh. But if he had picked up that invis rune, there's a chance. So there is actually there was a gym, but it looks like maybe it's gone now. Uh, yeah, it looks like the gym is in fact gone. There's a chance he could have gotten in there, maybe stolen that Aegis in return. Well, whatever the chance of happening, it did not happen, and now Navi is- What is going on in my house? I gotta kill someone right now, one sec. Okay, we're at 17 to 16. Uh, Puppy goes ahead and walks right in and uses those wolves and knows how to get a bunch of harass on that tier 3 tower. It takes a bunch of damage. It looks like he's about uh, one two thirds HP right now. Misery goes ahead and backs up. He's got 1,200 gold right now. Looking at the uh, Puppy, or the uh, the farm on this Lycanthrope, he does have 1,000 gold. He's already finished his Necrobook level 2, so that Necrobook level 3 is just about complete. Uh, Light of Heaven's got himself a Blink Dagger to go with his Mechanism and Soul Ring. Up top, uh, we do have Art, of course. It looks like he's going to go for a uh, Ag Scepter. He's got Point Booster and an Ogre Axe right now. Nebula, uh, how and awkward bottom. was that for you? Dindy, of course, has a Gwinsu <laughs> as well as a Gem of True Sight. What? How awkward was that for you when I just like... Nah, it's fine. I'm, this I'm, is normal, I'm used, yeah? I'm used to being abandoned. <laughs> oh. So, uh, effing mad, funzy, Cinder gonna gather back up here. It looks like this is gonna be another last ditch effort here. Asashka has now got his BKB, so that does help him out a bit. Now, the question for me is, are they gonna continue to focus Misery? Because as long as they keep doing that, they will lose these battles. Well, no, here's the difference. We're gonna have a BKB Dragonite with level 16. It don't matter who he's focusing, because he is a Frost Epicenter. Effing mad just ult hit the ground! He must have taken lesson from that 020 Melk, because Melk did that all day long in that game. <laughs> Effing mad the new Pusher Street? Nah, nah, nah. It's just, it's just, just a little. It's, it's, it's an homage to Melk. That's all. Like, I have not all. seen misclick on Ultimate more on any hero other than like Venomaster. Oh man, I do it all the time. Just random heroes, like, no problem. Anyway. Uh, Kabat's gonna go and jungle pick himself up some creeps here. He actually has a Staff Witcher as well, so unless he's going for a old Ag Stick, which is possible, but I think if he was going for Ag Stick, he would have picked up either the Ogre Axe or the Point Booster. I believe that is gonna be a Necro buff, so. Is, is MTW gonna just wait two minutes for that ultimate? Um, for Vina's ultimate? No. He's level 11. Ah, uh, And I mean, they're not I, pushing in. It takes a long, that's a long cooldown. That's a long way for a miss full, full two minutes is no joke. That's going to be 30 minutes by the time that happens. In that two minutes, you're going to get um, Necrobook 3 is going to be pu purchased and put on, on Puppy. Um, Enigma's got 2k gold no, right now. Puppy's saving for buyback. He's saving for buyback. I mean, Navi's playing smart. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good choice. That's a good choice. Hey, everyone's saving well for buyback. Well played, sir. All the die heroes got buyback gold. They are just waiting for every mass miss. I can't believe this. Except for Storm Spirit, so actually, Dindy does not have buyback gold, but he does have a hex and, of course, chain with ball lightning, which is well, typically better than buyback, to be honest. Just you mean, you mean he's Dindy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, also he's Dindy. That yeah. helps as well. He's got a double damage rune in a bottle right now. He's actually going to go ahead and just push bottom. He does have TP scroll, so he can get back mid anytime he needs to. There's really no immediate threat of MTW actually getting in base. Looks like MTW going to go ahead and bail on this push. I, was it the Venomancer ulti? Is that the reason that they bail on this, Venomancer? It could be. I mean, right now, MTW needs every single spell. Uh, these team fights have been so close that losing a Venomancer ult, I mean, it's a big ult. So. Yeah. That's true. It is true. It's a lot of damage. I mean, even, even you know, 29, 30 minutes in, it's still it's still quite powerful. It looks like we're going to have the double damage rune uh, finally end up popping on uh, on Storm Spirit. He does go bottom and he's going to go up to Cinder. It looks like Cinder will go down. We see a TP from Funzy, but that's actually dangerous. Um, there is a Gwensu and a bunch yeah, of. Uh, you made me bottle charges for that. Yeah, there's a bunch of bottle charges. He could easily go after that Beast Master. I think he might have been able to pick him up, but. Uh, Pup Dindy decides to play it safe, just waits it out. They do have the late game advantage. There's really no reason to charge in too aggressively. It's 17 to 17. Obviously, 6 to 7 in towers of that middle tier 3 has gone down for and, the. And uh, look at the goal side. difference. I think that this worthy uh, telltale sign of the game is 4,000 gold lead, 5,000 gold lead for, Na uh, for Navi. And he zips on the low ground. Uh, of course, Prophet's dead for uh, 20 more seconds. He does have the buyback, but if you could force a buyback, hey, that is a small victory again. I just want to point out there's an over 15,000 XP advantage for Dyer right now. That is 
Well, that is a huge XP advantage despite all this. Of course, they have been pushing, so they've been clumping the other, not really farming near as much. Uh, but that is a pretty big advantage at this point. It definitely is the level advantage. I mean, they've been winning team fights as well, so let's not forget that. And a puppy's yeah. been getting solo kills, solo kill, of course, definitely give you more EXP than uh, kills gotten in a team fight. So that contributes a little bit to that as well. But looks like uh, Prophet is back without needing to buy back. So that is an extra point booster that he just saved for himself. But he is still saving for the buyback just in case that he does need it. Right now, Navi putting the pressure, and that's very, very smart, especially when you have a hero like Storm Spirit with a hex, because you could get free kills against, uh, you know, Venomancer, that's a free kill. Prophet, that's actually a free kill. So. Absolutely. As is the Chen, and I would like to point out the last battle, what Navi did is they went ahead and focused the actual weak heroes on the Radiant side and killed the Chen immediately, then they went after the yes. Venom before they started killing everybody else, whereas MTW in their big battles, they went after the tanky heroes, which makes no sense. We do have a Vaughn from Dindy, maybe picking up Cinder in a second time here. Nope, opts not to use the Gwinsu. I don't think he could have gotten a kill. I, I really don't think he could have gotten a kill. Is it, is it, well, I mean, there was a Night Stalker behind him, though. Is there a chance he forgot he has him? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Nah, you, you, think, you think that Dindy knows he has a Hex? Shocking. <laughs> So oh, Dendi is getting a lot of mana region. I think he knows. <laughs> I think he knows. We have a gathering of five NTW heroes in the middle. Of course, Cinder did not go down. Uh, the Aegis has a little bit longer here. I think it's another five minutes before five five minutes or so before that res that uh, does res. Let's quickly so. check out on the item. It, it's such an action-packed game. I, I already forgot when they took down the uh, Aegis or took down the Roshan. Do we? What, what do you do here? Do you do the smoke gank? They are doing that. If you're MTW, yeah, I think that's the best best option because you can't, you can no longer just go in and push uh, and use sheer power. Uh -oh. You actually have to pick somebody off. It looks like they might find. Well, they need to go after the puppy, and they do in fact do so. He goes ahead and cracks his ultimate, but he's not a BKP. This is going to pick the puppy off first. This is a big time battle here, taking one hero down. Manages to pick one off. Arts Arzar is going to be able to get away. He goes for the TP. It's going to work. He's going to get out of there. Uh, but it looks like maybe uh, MTW is going to go ahead and suicide in middle. Um, I would not be surprised to see Dindy push it up. Yeah. Yep, it looks like Dindy as well as Mizzy are going to go ahead and counter push in. I think this is a good choice, but the loss of that hero is going to be very difficult for them to defend. Um, oh, nope, they're going to think maybe better of it, and Misery is going to go ahead and TP middle. That yes, is going to be the case. Simply not too fast, not fast enough. And with Puppy being out of position, that caused him a lot of map positioning. He does buy back. I almost felt like he should have bought back way earlier. No, Dindy gets stunned. He does not. No, he does have the buyback, but that's very, very costly. He zips backward right now. Uh, Shasuga's ultimate form is running very, very low. Arzart, and it's going to try to get off a stun. Another great splurf. Can we get more follow-up stun? Misery is coming in. Is he going to try to slow? This is a long, long chase. The entire Navi squad stalking behind. There is a blink in. Yes, Dragon Form is out. This is the time to fight. If it's time to fight, yes, we do have Lycan coming in. Effing Matt's gonna go down. Drop your ultimate, my friend. It's already down. Storm Slipper zips in right now. He's gonna get a hex off. He had the hex? No, he did. It did not. It was on cooldown. It was on For just a second. I was gonna say he did forget he had it. Uh, but no, he did have a Vortex as well. That was actually off cooldown the whole time. Funzy does manage to get away there. I think he was going for a hex and then realized it was on cooldown and didn't, didn't cast Vortex fast enough. Yes. So, uh, Navi's going to go ahead and look like maybe push in middle here. We do have a TP back from Funzy. There is still a Vino dead. I do not believe he has buyback. Um, no, he does not. So this will be a 5v4 push. This obviously favors Navi. Yes, thank you for letting, them, <laughs> letting us know that one. Uh, tower yeah, is going to get glyph, no and that's going to have enough time for the Venomancer to come back. He will have his ultimate in just a little bit as well. Lycan destroys the tower with, uh, with his Necrobooks. The Necrom Necromonicon get duty, the archer or whatever. Um, anyway, Dindy still here is going to go ball right after that center. They really want center now. Dindy's going to be forced back. They really can't. He doesn't have a lot of HP. He's only got 1300. He does get sprouted here. Um, unfortunately for you know MTW, he's still storm and he can just ball away at his leisure, and he does do so. Um, so looks like going to pull back here after getting that one tower. Funzi does have the Beastmaster roar, and I do believe they can bring down Storm Spirit during the duration of that roar. Strassica uh -oh. pops his ultimate, and they're going to focus on Puppy again. Puppy, you got to keep mind, does not have it this time, but the Black Hole, is it going to be dropped? Yes, it's on two. No roar this time, and now they're going to focus on effing Matt. Is that the question? Light of Heaven very low in terms of HP. Storm Spirit working on Kebab. He does finish on Kebab right now. Puppy is going to end up going down to the Dragonite. It's just doing simply too much damage. They're going to focus on Misery next. I, I don't know if this is a correct choice. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit, he's working. He's going to find himself a haste he's gonna jump back into this, this team fight looks like he is there's a prophet teleporting in but he is trying to help out it's just not enough at this point misery will end up going down surrounded by a million of treants yes he is gonna go down and what is storm doing storm is he gonna try to port out what, he, okay there's a buyback from light of heaven he's gonna just go to secret shop right no he's gonna go push top without a tp scroll. yeah he actually doesn't have a tp scroll so this is just a a blind counter push here unless he runs yep he does have haste he's gonna run back up to that tower it looks like uh, we do have why would we pause somebody, somebody dropped, dropped. Uh, i don't actually get any 
Uh, do you get a a thing that says somebody dropped? I'm not. I haven't I, been getting I, one today I, or yesterday. No, no, definitely. If well, Funzie just reconnected, so. Yeah, I see them reconnect, but I do not see them drop at all. Yeah, I, I um, didn't get so it. Must, so. uh, maybe it's if we're in the spectator or in the caster broadcaster spot, we don't get that. Maybe that's what it is. Um, anyway, so I want to point out, actually, they went after Misery there because they were the only one he can get, right. uh, by the way, when you said they weren't sure about it. Um, of course, Stormstar could just ball away, and the other hero was already a little bit too far away. So, But they do make a really nice foot of going after Puppy immediately and taking him down. Um, Enigma hit a nice black hole. Unfortunately, they didn't really have a whole lot of damage to back that up, and all he ended up getting was just a dead Venno. So it uh, didn't really work out for them too much. Yeah, but they did stop the push. Again, kills are being traded. Um, you keep talking about how the Dire has better late game. I'm, I'm, I mean, you have a Prophet and Dragonite. The late game is not lacking here. And of course, the Aura definitely extends your late game a little bit from uh, the Yeah, I, I don't think it's terrible late game by any stretch of the imagination. I just, I just think that Lycanthrope, Storm Spirit, Leshrac, and Night Stalker is going to be better. Uh, assuming, of course, that they all get items. Now, Leshrac, of course, doesn't have a whole lot. He's got Arcane Boots and looks like he's going to go for an Axe Stick. Though he, it does have 3.6k, so he is saving for buyouts. Uh, and actually, did he just buy out? He just bought out and still has 3.6k, right? I don't think he did. Uh, in that case, we're not going to have time to think about this as... Are we going to see Dendy Storm? Uh-oh. Do some no, magic. I actually don't think they need a Dendy Storm. I think they just walk in and fight him right now, can't yeah, they? Yeah, it's a big flank oh. coming from the background. Dendy is circling around. Is he going to get... He's jumping in right now. Dragon Form gets popped. Okay. He yep, he dropped an illusion there for Vision or a Remnant, rather. Um, they're trying to go after this Rosh, and he's, he's actually not doing a whole lot of damage to him at this point as their team is about to split up. Arzard does end up getting caught, though, and picking up Arzard very quickly. That's kind of useful for them. Obviously, they're going to go ahead and go for Puppy next. It looks like he does crack his ultimate, but he gets sprouted in, taking a bunch of damage. But he goes and balls and goes right after Funzie. Funzie will be going down here. Yes, indeed, he does. Puppy, meanwhile, does manage to get away. Rosh is still alive. We see Cinderin going down next. Sasuke, DK trying to throw down as much damage as he can. Dindy is out of mana. He's going to go ahead and immediately TP out. Well played there from Dindy. Light of Heaven. Uh, too much HP to get away. And I believe they're going to go ahead and go for the DK next. With Misery chasing, there's no way DK is going to be able to get away. Uh, BKB is off cooldown, of course. He used it in that battle. So uh, the death of DK and I believe the death of Roshan. And soon the death of MTW would be my guess. And to answer your question, you no, know, Arzard did not buy it back. He died in that team fight. Now has bought back into this. And now they're going to get the Roshan. Stormstrip will be getting the Ages of Mortal, I imagine. Uh, yeah, they can actually put it, they're probably going to put it on Dindy, but they can easily put it on Lycan. Yep, yep, they do they go do. and pick it on Lycan. Now, one thing to mention here is, is MTW has been really been focusing Puppy really aggressively in all these team fights. Um, so I think this is a good choice. Now, what this can allow Puppy to do is, if they do jump on him immediately and start throwing all of their stuff on him, he just doesn't crack his ultimate and wait until he dies in Aegis. Uh, and then crack it afterwards and right. kind of have a... Uh, after the battle, all of the haymakers are thrown, he then runs around as this giant ember wolf, and it really helps him out. And you got to keep in mind at this point of the game, Beastmaster is just a roar and some aura. That's it. He doesn't really right-click that hard. He's very utility in a sense. He, he does have Necro 3, and he does have Medallion Courage, and that's nice and all, but compared to a, a, a like a real hero, he, he's just not... He's just a roar. That's it. Yeah, we have a Black King bar actually now completed on Leshrac, uh, so a little bit more you know tank there on top of, the, of course, the Avatar, which is the big deal. Um, Dindy, meanwhile, has got himself an ultimate orb and a Void Stone, so looks like he's going to be going for a Lincoln Sphere as his next item after getting that Good Hex. Uh, it's going to give him a lot more survivability. It's going to obviously dodge DK stun. It's going to be just really useful in general. Against the war um, as well. Yeah, and Misery, of course, has got himself... Does it? Does Ro not go through Lincolns? No, it doesn't. It's a single target oh. stun, yeah. Interesting. I thought... I thought it I goes through I BKB, it but not Lincolns. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My bad. My bad. Anyway, uh, Funzie, of course, has a Blink Dagger now, so that does give a little bit more initiation, so his utility is now a little bit higher than it just was. I think this is a good purchase, um, because as you mentioned, he is just a Roar now, so getting off the best Roar he possibly can, I think, is a good choice. <laughs> uh, the best uh, Roar really? of the world, and looks like... Hey, they... man! Oh. The better your Roar, the better your pride? I don't know. It's like a it's like a line joke, but it's kind of crappy. I don't know. Whatever. MTW, so we have a full gather here of MTW in middle. Once again, they're going to try. This This is the last push. If this one doesn't go through... I, uh, I don't yeah. think it's going to work I out. I think so, too. Uh, but I don't think it's going to work out, either. But there are BKBs um, all over the place here, so perhaps a little bit of BKB action, and maybe they can just get the racks off this. It only takes a little bit of a couple of good kills. Now, Navi does go ahead, Puppet goes ahead and cracks his ultimate, and runs right in, Kabat goes down immediately, doesn't even get his ultimate off. We do see a Black Hole catching two here, Cinderin and Funzy, then Sasuka. It thinks Blinky walks into it as well. Effing Mad is going to go down, as is DK, and I will say that that is going to be the GG. Dendi, focus the Chen. That is his mission this game. Every single fight, he jumped in for the Chen, did not want the Hand of God to come off, and well, if you get focused, and of course, uh, the natural tendency is, hey, someone's focused on my hero, let's surround that hero, jump in, and Life Heaven says, lol, and came in with a big black hole. Arzar follow up with Pulse Novas, 
And that was a clean team wipe without losing yeah. any single hero. Not even losing a whole lot of HP, to be yeah. honest. Navi just took it. Yeah, big time. Uh, Light of Heaven with a really nice black hole. DK inexplicably just walked right into it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but when there's a black hole, run away. Right? If you get too close, you'll hit that threshold. Maybe you try to stun to, to cancel. Can you? Can, does that work? Because Dragon Tail is range. Get, right? Well, yeah, but not from the front side. You got to come around from the yeah, back. You, right? <laughs> you can't. You can't walk through the black hole, son. I don't think that works. Uh, either way, Navi is going to go and take this game. I really like their strategy. I think their execution was very strong. MTW had a good idea. Pick a lot of very early game pushes and go for it. But Navi was prepared. They knew what was up. They said, "Okay, you're going to push a lot of towers. We're going to mitigate your advantage by getting as many towers as we can as well." So you invested all of these picks and heroes in trying to get towers, and we got them as well. So we didn't even have to do that as hard. Any other team would have just faltered to MTW's pressure. It was a massive amount of pressure. Sometimes I just think to myself, does just Navi on purpose play this type of games? Like most Navi games are intense, exciting. I think they're like, yeah, we're just so good. We're gonna just, uh, you know. I think there's a chance that they <laughs> use that to their advantage. A lot of other teams maybe maybe get get under that pressure and under the lights and under the. Uh, you know, the early it, there's usually not that much action in an early game of, of typical Dota games. I mean, yeah, you get the gangs and the, the little early pushes, but not just you know counter pushing and, and like base trades at level eight. That's just not a thing that most teams are used to. Whereas Navi's like, we understand what's happening here. We know how to win this game. Yep. You know what's up. Yep. And they have been here back. before. They they are gonna win this game. This is a best of three series. MTW looking a little bit mortal. They are undefeated in the Premier League, but not anymore as Navi take that win away. And this is a very convincing win, right? I mean. I yeah, think well, on actually, MTW side, you feel a little sad, like, this was a good honest, game. I think this is a little closer than it looked. I realized the final score was 33-22, and, you know, the game kind of got out of hand about 15 to 20 minutes ago for MTW. Uh, they started to, to kind of lose it here. But I think there were really one battle at about minute 15 from just winning this game. Yes, that's, uh, that's definitely the case. There, were, there was, you know, they had a couple of decisions to focus Misery where I really think that, that really cost them big time. And if they had just transitioned that focus to anybody else, to be honest, other than maybe Dendi, um, I think they they could very easily could have got middle racks very quickly. And this game could have been completely different. So strong performance from both teams, but Navi just a little bit stronger. Final score is 33 to 22. Game two is coming up right now. Don't go anywhere. Of course, Luminous and Nebula from DotaComTiers.com was your broadcaster, and we're going to be bringing you guys more broadcasts in just a moment.
Hey everyone, welcome back to game number two. If you guys thought that was some intense Dota 2 action, well, more is going to be coming your way. I am Lumis from DotaComSeries.com, and we are broadcasting Premier League number two, week number four match. Looks like MTW just got their hands on Chen. And, yeah, uh, pretty pretty, pretty obvious pick there. I mean, uh, Darkseer, Broodmother, and Panda were their bans. We saw Lycan, Invoker, and Furion being banned by Nabi, leaving the obvious hero of Chen left in the pool. So MTW, go ahead and pick them up. Uh, now, this obviously didn't pay off for them last game, but they were very close with that, and they did have a Furion as well, though. So I expect maybe not quite such a balls-out push strategy to begin with, but yeah, maybe maybe they felt like they just executed a little bit poorly and they had what everything they needed to win, so maybe they will try it again. Yeah, Navi, of course, definitely has option because they all of the players know how to play multiple roles, multiple heroes. We could see Navi playing this head straight up. They could run a trialing against uh, what MTW throws at them. They could run a, a jungler. Uh, they're going to pick up Death Prophet. Yes, they do play Death Prophet themselves. They could run Enchantress as a counter pick against Chen. A lot of options for Navi. Let's see what they're going to take. Nebula, I'm going to allow you to do a little bit of pick ban. I'm going to have to take care of something really fast. No problem. We have an Enigma to Kravlis being picked up here. Now, as we mentioned in the first game, Nabi has been um, losing versus Kravlis quite frequently. I mean, it, not frequently, but this is the one hero they have struggles with. They're actually 1-4 in four versus Kravlis. It's one of few heroes they have a legitimate losing record against. They are 0-2 oh um, versus a num uh, another hero, but I actually can't remember it off the top of my head. But with uh, five actual games, it's a bit more of a large enough sample size to really identify that they do have a little bit of problems with the Kravlis. So they said, go ahead and grab her here. Uh, perhaps maybe respecting her a bit more than they previous were the last few days. I'm not sure. So they go ahead and grab themselves an, a, uh, a Krabos. We have MTW going ahead and grabbing the Beastmaster and the Leshrac uh, with their second and third picks here. That allows themselves... Oh, Qu Queen of Pain, I'm being told, is the uh, the other hero that uh, Navi was having troubles, troubles with. Though 0-2 is not quite a large enough sample size to really just say that flat out that, oh, they're bad against Queen of Pain. I think 1 and 4 is a bit more obvious that Crowblis does give them some troubles. Uh, so with the Lush Track and the Beastmaster, they again uh, have a lot of early push. It does give them some map control. Clearly, they like that Beastmaster pick. Um, so pretty similar heroes as the last game, just a little bit interchange as to who got who here. Uh, obviously, the last game, Lush Rack was on Navi side. Now it is going to be an MTW. Um, we still see the Enigma. A Venomancer now has been swapped into the Navi side, so... Uh, and so a little bit of anti-push anti, anti -push potential there in the wards. And, of course, Krabalus, uh just really strong with her carrying swarm and anti-pushing and killing creep waves very quickly. She's obviously very strong in lane, and she has an ultimate to just decimate towers and just dominate team battles. We do have Potomite being banned here from NTW, uh, followed up with a Potom ban from Navi, and an Omni Knight ban from NTW as well. So uh, pretty pretty heavy respect there from the Omni Knight. Now, Omni Knight is a really strong hero that I think doesn't quite see as much play as maybe it should. Definitely uh, the Repel case. Uh, Omni Repel is a strong hero and his ulti is ridiculous. Omni Knight plus Cropless ultimate. I mean, <laughs> there's yeah. very little things in the game that could actually bring that combination down. I'm not personally liking the Beastmaster pick that much. I understand the ore stacking is going to be potential, but one of the bigger reasons you pick the Beastmaster is for a strong laning as well as his Beastmaster roar. But Cropless is one of those few heroes in the game that she will able to do damage despite being stunned or not. She doesn't care if she gets roared as long as she gets mecked up by his teammates. You can roar all she want. Exorcism will be flying out and doing massive amount of damage. I don't think Navi will have a, such a weak Kropolis that will, she will die during the duration of the roar. So, I think Kropolis is going to be a big game here. Yeah, I like I liked Na how Navi set this up. They left Chin in the pool, basically baiting MTW, saying, Hey, you can take the Chin and then we'll get the Kropolis. And if you do take Kropolis, you're giving us Chin. And as everybody knows, if you give Chin <laughs> to Navi, that's a death sentence. You might as well just concede. Um, so they kind of, they, they set this up pretty expertly, did Puppy. We got the last bit here from Puppy, a Vengeful Spirit, so identifying that Auras may be an issue. Uh, going ahead and removing that one, that's another good choice here, as well as being a strong initiation. And one of the few heroes that you can maybe, you know, swap out an Enigma with off of his ultimate. Um, you can swap a, a, a Krabbles and maybe get a stun off before she can crack her ulti and maybe take her down with, you know, swap roar followed by a Vengeful stun and allowing a Leshrac to hit a stun as well. So I think that's a good choice there as well. So I'm looking for MTW to grab... It looks like they're going to pick more pushers to me, uh, despite the the fact that Navi have so many counter pushers themselves. MTW usually use their fourth pick uh, to pick up a support. Uh, some decent support could be a Crystal Maiden, although in a game like this, that's not, very squishy. Yeah, very squishy. Witch Doctor, very squishy as well. They they do pick Twin Head Dragon from time to time, but it doesn't do too much against, for example, a crop. I think they really wanted Venge and Puppy hit it, you know, right right on the yeah. head. 
Yeah, there's still a win runner. They could play him, her as support, or as anything they really oh. wanted to. But they go ahead and go for the levy here. This how, is how can we forget choice. about this one? Yeah. Uh, actually, it's, it's kind of a pretty misplay on our part to yes. not mention Levy here. Uh, Levy's ultimate, of course, being spectacular in team fights. He has that anchor smash, which is a legitimately very strong skill. Of course, Gush gives you a lot of gank potential anchor smash, or um, Crack and Shell rather allows him to ensure he gets off his ultimate. And coupled with the less track, it's going to allow him to set up some nice stuff. Oh. We see a Pudge Dindy here, baby. I like where this is going. I do, do so too. Hey, don't matter if you have team fight. Actually, I don't know, man. I, I'm whoever playing the pudge, man. Just just stand in the hook ring, get hooked, and be like, "Yo, bro," because you know it, it's so dumb. That Kraken shell is so strong. It cancels Doom. It cancels everything. Pudge could dismember you. The Kraken procs. Pudge will be still dr going through his dismember animation, but you could walk around as Tie Hunter. Like it, it just. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's really Dude, annoying. Pudge has to like identify and cancel his own ulti. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I was... Holy smokes! We see a Shadow Fiend is the fifth there from MTW. So. Uh, not at all what I expected. Well, I mean, to, from it's not too surprising. Game. MTW have been known to pick Shadow Fiend. They do get that aura thing going on. Uh, Chen can be a very good defensive tool for the Shadow Fiend during the mid game, especially if you go for a BLT Shadow Fiend. Huh? Huh? Some old school Shadow Fiend item builds. Probably not what we're going to see here. But also because it's bad. Yeah. Well, eh. bad is a strong word. Let's go with suboptimal. <laughs> Uh, but right now, I mean, Shadow Fiend, once he picks up BKB, there's very little answer. Sure, there's Dismember, sure, there's Black Hole, but those spells are not the best thing to land. But if he gets a Requiem so off, oh, every, everything else is kind of going to connect. Yeah, I, I think this is a bit, not ballsy, but it's very, it has a lot of, shows a lot of faith in themselves or, or uh, as their, their players as a whole. For Senator pick up a uh, Shadow Fiend when you know Dindy's probably going to be in that middle lane with the, the pudge. with the, the Pudge. And if it's not a solo mid Pudge, then it's going to be a Krobolus who gives equal problems uh, for that Shadow Fiend. So I feel like Shadow Fiend may not have the easiest lane here. Um, though if he gets enough early last hits, he can he can win a blade against, uh, lane against Pudge. It's not winnable by any stretch, but it is Dindy. I'm, I'm going to equal, uh, I'm going to echo your opinion here. Uh, you are down one game against the best team in the world, and you're picking Shadow Fiend, who is not the... Uh, hot topic of the day here. Windrunner is going to be the last pick, and I do believe that is going to be played by Light of Heaven, right? Or is he going to go Enigma again? He had a really good Enigma last game. He did play a nice Enigma. I would. I'm going to bet you that Puppy plays that Windrunner as a support. support. If if Enigma ends up being in the jungle, then Puppy will play that, and Windrunner will be topped by Light of Heaven as he does play that hard lane. So it looks like Puppy will be that Enigma. So I'm going to bet that Enigma will then be in the jungle. Yep. He's got himself some uh, Sentry Wards, and that means Light of Heaven will be up top. That's going to give Arzart and Misery potentially the bottom lane. They could do a Vino Pudge combo. That could be sweet. A little bit of rot, a lot of Venomous Gale action on bottom. Now then he's going to go mid. I mean. Who are we kidding ourselves? MTW Cinderin is going to be playing that Lesh. Uh, he is going to. Oh. Does he go mid with the Lesh? No, that's Loda. I keep getting the, the two great captains confused. My apologies. Gobob's going to be playing again once again. Shaska is going to be on the carry Shadow Fiend. Effing Man is going to be playing the TIE Hunter. And then we have Funzi on the Beastmaster again. Yeah, we have dual five-man, uh, you know, r excursions into the jungle hill trying to find people. I, do you see teams doing this a lot? And it always leads with the potential of awesomeness. Early it never on. happens. The awesomeness and, never happens. Well, no, it happens one out of every, like, ten games. No, less than that. Um, Ah, or maybe one out of the 15. But the point is, when it does happen, it is awesome. It is. It um, is. Anyway, it looks like a lot of him is going to go ahead and make his way at middle. Misery is going top or middle, so uh, boom, bro, what's up? Dindy and Vino are going to be dual laning that, that, uh, that bad boy up on bottom. Or though, actually, I think it's more likely Arzard hangs out in jungle with Puppy. Well, I mean, a dual lane can be possible. What they want to do in this lane is that Dendi's going to get most solo farm. Venom's want to hit at least level 3 off pools and ganks and whatnot. And Dendi, I mean, once you have the Venomancer charging at you, you got to back off. In terms of tower pushing, Push is a great tower pusher, as ironic as that sounds. Because once you run past the, past the creep wave, what do you do yeah. as a defensive hero? You run it's back to It's similar too. to Night Stalker, yep. where he can dive in there, and you can't come up there because a the hook will just end your life. Yes. Like, it does it does insane amounts of damage. Hook dealing 400 damage is a pretty legit deal. I mean, it, it, Oh, 360, they nerfed it, I forgot. I mean, it, it doesn't matter whether that hook, you know, it's, it's not a high-accuracy spell. It's just, just the threat that you will hit, that will send you backwards. Yeah. So up top, Light of Heaven is going to be up against uh, Effing Max Levy as well as that Shadow Fiend, who they did go ahead and put up on top lane, expecting Krobos to go middle. This is a good choice. Let's leave Cinderin's Leshrac solo middle against Krob. So we're going to see a bit more of a farmed Leshrac than we did the last game. And on bottom, Arzart's just hanging out with that ward, just uh, keeping Funzi completely off this lane. It's going to give Dindy a lot of time to free farm up here on bottom. Yeah, Funzi was able to deny that ward with the help of his uh, teammate. That's pretty cool. I mean, I mean, this isn't going to accomplish too much because, sure, they don't see you. 
But what are you going to do if they don't see you? You're still going to hug yeah. your towers. So I'm not sure if that was the most necessary war denied. It's kind of like those ones where, where you, you dust SA and SA's like, You see me? I'm still killing you. What's up, bro? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're still going to die. Light of Heaven having a little bit of tough time in the top lane here. One of the more, uh, I guess, different play style of N Navi's uh, Windrunner is that Light of Heaven generally gets the tough lane earlier on. But he, he's going to stay on the top lane forever. He's not even going to help out his teammate during the mid-game. He's going to farm. I heard the greatest Diddy quote early that t Atri linked to in our... Uh, Atri, by the way, the king of the Dota internets. Um, he posted on our Skype that Diddy was talking about... Every time they ask Light of Heaven how the top lane or the hard lane is going, he always says, wonderful, perfect, or wonderful, amazing, perfect. And it never is. That That's it's the joke. Cause he's down. having the worst lane in the world. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> I love that. That's such a wonderful, amazing, perfect. I'm going to start doing that from now on. Yeah, Bruno. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Bruno, not Atrius. So shout out to Bruno, um, who is our ma a magic magical statistician who is responsible for all these crazy stats we've been throwing out at you, such as the uh, one to four situation against uh, against Krabulus and etc. So. Yep. Or the two and seven Ferian from the Sexy Bamboo. Now three and seven now, but it looks like Puppy might be a little bit trying to, uh, little trouble. A lot of counter warding going on, man. These guys are right from the get-go. They're like, you know what? It was Tower last game. This game's going to be wards. Cool stuff. Yeah, it's also uh, also the 2 and uh, 8 invoker of uh, in Sexy Bamboo. Dude, that well. ward, the, that the ward bamboo survived with a 1 HP. I mean, how... Did it really? Did it look. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. Uh, they do go ahead and drop another sentry ward here. Um, now, Kebab's going to hang out in jungle here. Just get a little bit... He's already level 3. Wow. He, he's gotten levels pretty quick. Effie Mad, meanwhile, pulling up top is level 2. Uh, that Shadow Fiend is already level 3, so he's got himself... Actually, level 2 raise it by 3. Um, typically, you wait till 5 before you double it up, but... No, no, you definitely double it up. What, what are you talking about, bro? You need that? I, I think... I think when, you, when you're farming a lane, don't you oftentimes get Necromastery at 3 and then uh, I mean, get, you uh, can. That's definitely very, four and five? That's a, definitely a very greedy build. You could do, definitely do that. But, I mean, if you ever get a gush off against that Windrunner, having that level 2 raise means ah, you get a, a kill. It, it looks like a, he, lot damage, uh -oh. a lot of damage. There's a lot of damage. Is he going to... Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, big raises, too. Hitting both of them there. Well played there from uh, Sofska. We have actually jump here on middle on center. We do have a stun here, a venomous gale. It looks like Miser is going to continue after after another wave, and down he does go. So uh, Death Prophet ended up getting that kill, getting first blood. That's big time for them. Misery is one of those, or Cross is one of those heroes that uh, if he gets some early farm and gets a, a quick tank items, he, she can be almost impossible to deal with. She her ultimate is just you can't fight her. Like what are you going to do? Run around in her ultimate while she's tanking everything? That's no problem. Like I gladly let you focus me while my team does work. And if you don't fight her, well she's going to kill your tower. Well, I mean, that's I think the reason why the Shadow Fiend was picked up. Shadow Fiend does give you very, very strong physical DPS because of the minus armor rare, or a presence of Lord Voldemort, as uh, I would like to call that one. Funzy, by the way, hitting level two almost, as he is a uh, creep stacking like a champ. Though look at him. Uh, yeah, puppy. Meanwhile, on bottom just now uh, about to hit level four. Ours art as well pulling. Still just level two. Uh, Didn't he throw all this? Has been farming it up. He's level five right now. Um, he is missing a point. Does he have a point in stats? No, he just hasn't leveled up a point. He's just hanging out with one extra point. Do I have a bug? No, he just doesn't. Same he hasn't yet. still. Sad skill, no problem. Just doesn't, doesn't know which one he wants. That said, when Dindy gets six, uh, or potentially seven, I expect him to be a, maybe a little bit more aggro. Uh, maybe go after some kills here. Let's check out how we're doing in terms of gold difference chart. 1,000 gold lead, 40 radiant. That was the first blood that they picked up, as well as just better overall farm. <gasps> What is Light up top does one run away from that gush. I think an Anchor Smash is going to take him down. We see the power of Levy. Levy just does so much damage. Anchor Smash is no joke. One, level 1 Anchor Smash, 75 damage, of course, also with the slow. And the damage reduction. That damage reduction is is an often overlooked aspect of Anchor Smash. I think that um, is one of the best aspects. I mean, melee yes. versus melee laning, and that is insane. I, I got to say, Valve got to change that scaling. 40% just from a single level, make that thing scale or something. That is just simply too strong. Yeah, you see Levy uh, oftentimes solo middle because of that. I mean, if, if you have a melee mid lane and he just goes up there and drops some anchor smash, again, it's a very cheap manual spell. It just removes your ability to last hit for like seven seconds or however long it lasts. It lasts for quite a while. Uh, six seconds? That's a long time. Here comes the push on the bot lane here. Looks like the ward has scouted out Funzy. Pot, uh, Pudge will be rotting away. Maybe he was actually thinking, should I get level three rot to push a little bit quicker? I wouldn't put an outside Navi to do something like that, but... Oh, totally. Denny's totally capable of weighing out and optimizing his play and figuring out, do I actually need a level 3 hook right now? Ain't no um, one I to be hooking my lane, you know? Yeah, he did, he did go ahead and opt to, to just get that hook just in case, you know? Hook, hook's always better. I was about to say hooker's always better than rot. <laughs> anyway, in middle, Cinderin, 
Uh, just level five, whereas Krobulus is, or just now getting level six, rather, whereas Krobulus is uh, about halfway to level seven. So a sm slight advantage there. Of course, they did get that one kill. Um, this game, kind of the antithesis of the first game. We are seeing a little bit of push here on that bottom lane. By this point, last game, I think we had four towers dead and like ten deaths. <laughs> Not the 10 deaths, there's definitely at least 4 or 5 towers dead though. It was a crazy pushing game. Uh, heroes haven't actually seen each other at this point in the game yet, because they were just pushing different towers. And of course, we're going to see a Pudge teleporting to the top lane. He does have a smoke of the seat. I love it when Dendi does that. The hook that is going to miss. How's top lane going up? Perfect, great! Wonderful. Wonderful. That's what Light of Heaven is. going to go ahead and back up. Now, Hook is going to be off cooldown in about three seconds. We see a TP in here. This is a nice choice. going to force Dindy back there. Uh, so, Effing Mad, do just spending 135 gold there to save his teammate. And it's a Shadow Fiend to boot, so good choice. Now, Shadow Fiend's a really important hero. Um, obviously, he's one of those momentum heroes. If, if he dies early on, the game gets very hard for him. Eventually, he will farm up, but probably will be too late at that point. Yep. For anyone, uh, Pudge players out there, uh, people always ask Dendi, you know, how do you get so good at Pudge? And his response is always, just throw, keep throwing hooks. Uh, you're going to miss a lot, but when you hit them, you hit them. And if you hit them, it's a kill. So, And of course, Dendi's being fairly modest because he, hit, he hits a lot of hooks. Yeah, I think a better thing that Dendi should say is, just hit your hooks, bro. Yeah, don't miss. That's all I got to do. Uh, to be fair, he did just throw another one attempting to hit that hook. Now, I didn't actually hit. But it didn't cost him a whole lot. Yeah, it cost 130 mana. Uh, whatever. That is a legit cost. But if he hits that, that's, that's a kill. Shadow Fiend, and that's a much bigger kill. Yep. Much bigger deal. So uh, I do actually think there's a, there's a little bit to that. Just you can't you can't hit him if you don't throw him. Yep. We are on the bottom here. Uh, we did see the surround here being done by Arzar and Puppy. That this this game is it seems like Navi right from the get go is on lockdown. They're having advantage in lanes. They're having advantage in terms of tower. They're leading in terms of gold now, almost a 3,000 gold lead. MTW's got to pull out something special during the mid game. Off the back of that Shadow Fiend, looks like it's going to start right now against Light of Heaven. He is slow down here, and I think the women will not be enough. The, ooh, the Shadow Rage, yes. Top lane, not wonderful at this moment. Yeah, and in fact, uh, Shadow, Demon, Shadow Fiend doing what a lot of Shadow Fiends do, skipping his ultimate and opting to get uh, by level 8, uh, doubled up on the uh, full raises and the full Necromancer. It's a good choice. We see Cinder meanwhile on bottom goes in invisible. Unfortunately, there was a Sentry Ward <laughs> waiting patiently for him, and uh, I bet he's feeling pretty angry right now. We just walk in there, and all of a sudden Ooh! there's a war. Oh, fantastic hook from Dindy catching Kebab and drops an ultimate. Uh, Black Hole gets dropped, I think, just to save <laughs> That didn't... That didn't work out. No. I think that was a black hole to take the creep down so he wouldn't die, but it didn't work out. And, uh, well, whatever the case was, that black hole did not work. Funzy looking for the rune, but Pudge also, is, Pudge is going to get it. And Funzy in a little bit of awkward position. Look, he's still stacking these ancients like champs, but is he or is he going to plan to take it down with Axis and only Axis? Yeah, I, I think so. Actually, they're pretty close. If you see a lot of those... Uh, the tiny ones are getting pretty low, so he drops himself another axis, a lot of those are going to die. He's going to get a lot of quick XP, and then, you know, when you take him down to just three or four ancients, it becomes a lot more manageable, and you can easily uh, kind of take that down. Didn't he meanwhile... Just cutting off skeletons left and right. Meanwhile, up top, uh, Shadow Fiend did get that top tier one tower, so that's a bit of a win for MTW, managing to actually get a tower, which is you know better than they were doing. Meanwhile, uh, Light of Heaven is pretty solidly two and a half levels behind the Shadow Fiend, and he gets another. Well, man, Sox is having a fantastic game with Shadow Fiend right now. Uh, he is now up to two and oh, level nine. He is the highest level in the game. Um, Shadow Fiend starting to build a little bit of momentum, and this can spiral out of control very quickly. And meanwhile, on bottom, we do have an initiation going after Dendi. Dendi's going to continue to or actually run away here. Now there's not much of an initiation. Meanwhile, uh, Puppy does come up, but he does not have a black hole. He didn't use it on those creeps for some reason. Uh, Cinderin does just barely get out of there. It looks like he's going to survive. A lot of misspells. Ty Hunter did turn level 6 in that engagement. Unfortunately, no mana to use his ravage. Could have been very, very tight changing. It seems like the Dire Squad has, or ah. Navi has a. Uh, yeah, scouted out this ancient over here, and looks like they want to do something about it, but the awkward positioning does not allow to do so. But Dendi has sight, and if anyone actually want to go in, he's getting hooked. Yeah, I see what you did there with the, uh, the pun. It's well, uh, well played, sir. What anyway. did I do? I didn't even know what I did. What? You were talking about Levy's Ravage, and you said Tide Changer. Ah, ah. I, I, it was not <laughs> meant at all. Punch oh, looking man, for the hook. would be proud. Anyway, we do see him going ahead and walking in as a group. He still gets hooked out. Funzy will go down here to an ultimate. Uh, Venomancer perhaps going to get the last hit. Yep. Venno does end up getting that last hit, but they are going to get the Ancient, so... Right, not worth trade. it. <laughs> it's a trade. <laughs> it's a know. trade. Anyway, Effing Matt is back. He does have that Ravage. It looks like maybe Shadow Fiend's going to come here. Yep, we're going to see an ultimate from... Uh, from Effing Mad sometime soon, I expect. Nope, Venomancer's gonna get far enough away. Gonna go after Kebab, actually gonna get the kill. Make up your mind, my friends. And an ultimate here, finally, MTW decides that they're gonna go ahead and help their teammate out. Another nice hook by Dendi, taking down Effing Mad. So what looked like a sure death for Nabi ended up splitting up and taking down a hero themselves. I, Effing Mad was just holding to that ultimate. If they ulted Pudge, Pudge was gonna take a break on so as well. Sure, it was expensive ult for the kills, but you're getting kills and Dendi's up to his thing again. 
How's he? How is he getting sight? Oh, oh, he doesn't. I think that was a guess. That was 100%. just a blind one? He knew that those creeps were not yet gone. Um, so we went ahead and walked over there. Shadow Fiend just barely kiting those uh, angels, ancients far away to where Pudge could not pick him up and didn't he threw a, a blind hook in there and almost got one, almost got one. Yep, and of course with Navi playing really well on the other side of the map, that is going to give Light of Heaven some farm time on the top lane here. And Light of Heaven is going to be going for his standard mecha build. Seems like he's going to rush mecha before the phase. Week. Nope, just to say that he is going to finish the phase. Looks like he's going to put a little bit of pressure on the top lane, but the entire Dire Squad is coming in. Funzy does have the roar, and of course they do have the Ravage. Are they going to go for Light? Of heaven seems like that's going to be the case. He's Master Roar and a Gush Dream drop on him same time. I think they have to use a Ravage here, right? Ravage? There's going to be the Ravage, but he runs out! Oh, oh, oh. oh, effing mad being a little bit greedy with the Ravage. Now, I understand the plan. You don't want to waste it. Uh, you want to make sure and save that because it is such an important You know what he skill, just did? He just wasted point, it. At some point, you got to throw it, right? He waited too long. I mean, phase is plus wind run. That's a very fast hero. No, not so good from Diddy taking down Sashko, but it looks like he's actually going to get away of, of Shadow not actually catching anything. It was that an ulti's funsy instead? Ah, questionable choice there. I think maybe killing the Shadow Fiend would have been a better idea. It looks like they're going to get him anyway. Nice ultimate taking Diddy, but not quite killing him. Does get the Enigma, though. Yeah, Puppy wanted to do some trick black hole. You know, walk into the black hole in the shadow. You know, and it was uh, a little bit too woe Dota. For uh, Shastika, Shastika just ulted and kill him. That was a little bit of yeah, uh, and almost caught Dindy. Dindy's yeah. uh, you know level coming into effect there is just not quite enough to take him down. So he went ahead and got himself the treads. Not you know don't, you don't always see treads. On, oftentimes you'll see arcane boots. Sometimes you see bots. There's a lot of or face. Uh, arguments. Yeah, there's an argument for just about every boot uh, boot on Pudge, with the exception of maybe tranquil boots. I, I don't think you really want to get those. Um, anyway, Kabash is getting found here by Misery. It looks like he's gonna get away. So what? Tranquil Pudge, you know, plus AD movement speed. Yeah, no problem. But and then when you then when you rot, you can not be able to heal, and you'll they'll turn into they'll turn into crappy boots, right? And yeah. you just run around for fifty. Anyways, uh, puppy is invisible on the top lane. Don't don't have any black hole to whiff at this point here. Of course, Shadowfiend trying his best to work towards that BKB. He is going to eat a Malefice. Winner in position. Nothing to shackle off to. That is a mm. hex shackle shot. Meanwhile, Pudge gets a solo kill against Tie Hunter. But I want to see this Shadowfiend. And this Shadowfiend will it be dead? Beastmaster War. No, there's a hand of God coming in. Are we have going to roar? Yes, we are. Razus is going to come in. No, Shadowfiend's going to fight Eidolons instead. A little bit worried about his survivability. And here comes the second round of Malefice. Hack shackle shot again light of heaven putting on what some... are these shackles somebody call valve and discuss this because it's an issue shackle is dumb all right i'm just saying it's dumb you know today i'd like to point out have we shared raised or something? i don't know what you said but that was not a sentence something i have have raised we Hacks, will, shackle something... shot? No, no, no. You were talking about something else, and you said, like, have something. It was not a word, or not a sentence. Anyway, Puppy taking a bunch of damage here. Cinder goes after the Light of Heaven. Finally, the Shackle doesn't cheat, uh, but just managing to run one away from that uh, from that split of from Cinder. So, not a whole lot, but on bottom, meanwhile, Navi are pushing up against this tower, and it's taking a bunch of damage. It's down to uh, third HP, and it looks like they're actually going to get this tier 3 tower. We're seeing mass pings from MTW as they realize the error of their ways, and indeed, this Rax is gonna, this tower is going to go down. Yeah, well, they're going to go and Pudge. I'm not sure if that's the best idea. Ravage is going to be used. A couple Raises will bring down Dendi. Dendi is gonna go down. Shots to half HP. Raises two rays from our Shadow Fiend player is gonna bring oh, down. Can no. I go for more misery? Don't chase him. He is gonna pop his drum and run out. Kind of a late drum pop. Could have maybe save his teammates if he used it a little bit earlier. Yeah, and actually, if you look at the uh, the tier three tower, it's little, it's 47 right now. As misery is taking a bunch of damage. Looks like he is going to go ahead and drop himself a ooh, well played there from Sasuke throwing a. A ballsy little uh, race in there. I would like to point out the tower is 47 because the creep spawn and Vino or Vino was not microing his wards and his wards attacked the creep mm -hmm. uh, when there was three of them. Then they could have took down that tower. So a bit of a mistake there. And that's a big ghost swing just for the little bit of micro mistake. Uh, yep. 700 go about just just to be exact. Yep. And uh, that's going to give a Chen working towards a mecha. He would have to go for the recipe right now. So about 600 away from a completed mecha. Cinder uh oh, invisible pudge. Uh oh, going to get ganked. Yeah, this I think this is a dead cinder. And uh oh, Pudge gonna go. Oh, actually, maybe wait it out yeah. as the invis does run out. He throws a hook in there. Ooh, catches that creep like a boss. Unfortunately, I think it was aiming for the actual hero, so that didn't quite work out there for Dendi. Dendi's gonna go up high ground. He's gonna find Effing Mad, and if you get one more kill on Dendi like this, that's gonna slow down his momentum by quite a bit. He's do he dodges yeah. Splitter, but really he's not gonna dodge four heroes here. Yeah, but they do trade that for a tier two tower up top, so at least they got something out of it. They are down to uh, death nine to twelve now, as they end up uh, picking up that Vino as well. 
So th they picked up almost all the outer tier towers. There's a tier two still in the middle, but that tier three on bottom took a lot of damage. And at any point, they can kind of run in and just backdoor that, to be honest. Um, that said, you know, they've lost a couple of heroes, and while they did have a very strong early advantage, obviously Pudge got a lot of early kills. Uh, he started to die a few times in a row here, and that's really stifled him quite a bit. So Yeah, whenever Pudge dies, you, you lose map control. Not in the sense that he's a great pusher, but when there's a Pudge in, on the map roaming around, you play differently. And you guys know yes. what I'm saying. You guys play Dota games like, oh my god, we don't have any wards. Where the hell is that yeah. Pudge? It's dandy. You know? He's always everywhere. Right? He's like, when you don't have vision, he's everywhere he could possibly be at all times, and that's how you play. And if you don't play that way, that's right when he feels like he hooks you, right? Yep. So, inevitably, you, you play it extremely passive. You don't have vision. When he's dead, man, you can just be aggressive and go for any kind of farm you want. We're going to see a little bit of a dive here. Nope, looks like Sox is going to be able to get away. He does have his BKB completed, uh, and he's got 700 gold here, so not looking like any time soon he's going to have a blink there. Uh oh did he? Does see Sox? Is he going to throw a hook? Oh, no. He actually hits the... Uh, it's the, the neutral the, creeps. The neutral there as he was trying to throw it through there. Yeah, Shadow Fiend, even if it got hooked, might have been able to pop the BKB and actually turn the fight around. Sure, there's this member that could cancel, but to be honest, like it doesn't do any damage. The chicken is flying it to his own death. He gets invisible, but there is the net revealing him, and the raises is going to bring the Shaska is up to a mega kill. He is raising like Yafis. Can I say that? Yeah, this, this, is, this is going pretty well for, uh, for Shadow Fiend. He's actually 7 and 1 right now, and he's level 13. Uh, compared to Navi, we got a 10, 9, 9, 10, 8. That is a legitimately huge uh, XP advantage right now. So we were talking early on. I guess somebody dropped, maybe? 11 seconds? Interesting. Um, I, I would like to point out, we, we talked very early on about how it's really ballsy to grab a shadow when you're going up against the best team in the world and you're down... Um, one down game. on a down a game, yeah. but it's paying off wonderfully here as he continues to get kills and really is playing very well. Oh, I mean, it, they might look like they're leading in terms of kills, but look at the gold difference. Uh, Navi is leading heavily in terms of gold, six thousand gold. That is going to be things like mecha pipe and whatever else. We did again have Live Heaven starting really poorly on the top, but despite of that, phase boot mecha is finished. Drums up on misery. Urn is up on Dandy. He's been having quite a bit. Uh, no kind of big items being purchased. We don't see any BKBs or blinks of that sort yet, but it will come. Misery's trying to work towards a BKB. Is that is that what it is, or it's going to be a a Sange into a Heaven Hell Dark? Uh, I'm not sure. I was actually arguing with our admins in Skype. They were making fun of my Vino Venomancer uh, pronunciations. Anyway, uh, so Heaven's Halberd. Who are you questioning? Who's going to get that? Misery has an Ogre Club. Is that BKB or Heaven's Halberd? BKB does block a Ravage. Does not block Roar, nor does it give you a loss of viability against minus armor to the Shadow Fiend. Heaven's Halberd gives you a... You know, it doesn't give you too much of anything. Except it gives well, you evasion. It, 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 I mean, HP. it disarms... Yeah, well, it also disarms Shadow Fiend. I mean, well, he has BKB, the... so you're not going to really disarm him. Oh, uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, it's a, it gives you a lot of stats. It gives you a little bit of evasion, of course. It does give you some a a HP. I guess it could just be... Man, I feel like that's just going to be a BKB. Casual Ogre Club? No? Yeah, I, I doubt that that's <laughs> it. It could be... It's probably not going to be a Sage and Yasha. I'm going to go ahead and go out of limits and say it's not that. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a BKB. Oh, we'll see. But Heaven's Halberd has, does have uses. I mean, if you Heaven's Halberd, uh, um, Shadow Fiend, you make him crack his BKB, that's at least something. Yeah, I don't know if it's that good, but it's something. Looks like uh, the Dire Squad is going to go into the Roche Pit. You do see the presence of the Dark Lord. Uh, we'll be providing the minus armor against Roche. And because of the physical damage, and in fact, they have Chen, they will bring down this tower, or uh, this Roshan fairly quickly. Here comes Pudge. He's looking for a hook. He's going to, well, find, find a hook. He did technically hook a thing. Yes. Um, unfortunately, it was not the thing he was looking for. Uh, it was it was the wrong droid. That said, Roshan taking a bunch of damage here. He's actually not close to dying. He's he has a big tower. He's just a tower that walks around. Uh oh, Shasuga, um, black hole, one man black hole from Puppy. Ooh, Ravage is gonna get cracked though, and looks like Puppy uh -oh. is gonna eat a huge Requiem so to the face. Venomaster is gonna go down alongside as well. Misery gets roar. He is gonna go down here. Huge win here for the Raid or Dire Squad. Puppy in a little bit of trouble trying to run south, but uh, he's one gush away from death, and there's gonna be that gush. Punch gonna turn around, try to get a heal. He does get a hook heal before he dies, and so far he's buying time for his team trying to delay the Roshan as much as possible puppy by the way bought back down to half HP very very quickly shocks got walking in position here maybe looking for sea rage not gonna go for it uh, the fact is I don't think the dire has enough HP to go back into the Roshan pit actually puppy did not die in that fight he didn't buy back um, he was he was able to get away he didn't he actually ate a, get he ate a requiem to the face yeah but he did not he did not actually catch a raise as he managed to get out of there he wow. didn't die 
Um, so th that said, it was still a fantastic turnaround. Obviously, they hit a they hit a nice black hole there. Unfortunately, um, it didn't quite take down Shadowfiend before he was able to get an ultimate off uh, after that Ravage, and that that was just a big time combo of Ravage plus Shadowfiend. Of course, Ravage into Requiem is going to do a lot of damage, and now that Shadowfiend is so tank or so leveled up, he can actually tank a black hole pretty legitimately. I, th I think it was a good choice to throw down that black hole because they need to kill Shadowfiend, but without getting him, uh, it's pretty costly. Pretty costly. Yeah, it definitely did cost them a big advantage uh, that they gave away. Um, as they're not leading by 6,000 go anymore. A couple of nukes being traded on the middle here. Puppy playing very, very to the skin of his teeth. He's, he's got to be careful. He's basically one stun away from death. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a little ballsy there. Now, we do have um, Light of Heaven has resurrected. He has a mechanism now complete, so that's going to help him out a little bit in these team battles, though. Um, you know, if they hit a Ravage into a Requiem, I'm not sure he's going to have a chance to. He might just end up dying. He doesn't have a whole lot of HP, just the 910. Uh, that said, Misery is pretty tanked, though he has died a couple times here. Looks like we may have initiation. We see a silence on that shadow frame. We're going to see a roar on and Misery, and he goes down almost instantly, big time right there. Light of Heaven catches a splitter, but looks like he's going to be able to win run away. Uh, we do have our Puppy, of course, does not have a black hole, so he can't drop that. Funzy gets a bunch of nuke here, but I think there's just too much tank on, on MTW. They actually can't kill anybody, and there is the Hand of God. This battle's going to continue to extend, but we're down 4v5, so it's not really going to be... You know, too easy for him. Of course, Dindy a little bit out of position here with a creep chasing him, so they can't—they don't even know the hook's coming. Yeah, Pudge definitely went for a backstab with the hook, but he missed. Uh, didn't get too much going. He got an invisible. Any sentries? Any sentry wards? Do we have a winner? No sentry wards. Okay. There's, there's no winner, I suppose. No, no winner here. Uh, mechanism almost complete on Kabop, so going to give them even more team fight potential. Of course, with that less track or that. Uh, that Ravage and that. Oh, a nice hook here. Dust catch Shaska. He goes in and drops his ult or BKB immediately and an ultimate. That's worth a it. A little bit. I think he could have canceled that ulti there at the end. I think he knew that wasn't going to hit him uh, quite enough. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess the hook you know does cancel the BKB, so it's okay. But it kept him from dying. So we're going to go after the Rosh now. Looks like we're maybe have a nice hook on effing Matt. I'm not sure that's the one you actually. No, he doesn't. He doesn't want that here. A free blink dagger. Just goes ahead and drops a Ravage like no problem. That said. Uh, there's no ultimate on Shadow Fiend right now, so if they get in here, that Ravage won't quite do as much as it was. Puppy trying to find a black hole. He's actually got 10 seconds on cooldown. Puppy's taking a bunch of damage here. It looks like he's going to be able to get away. He will be able to get away. Continuing to attack uh, the Roshan is, is Shadow Fiend here. Yeah. Oh, Shackle Shot does hit on two. Here comes Effing Matt. He's looking for the Ravage or just scaring everyone away just by him himself. And that's what Ty Hunter does best. Very low HP. Another hook comes in. That is, he's just hooking nothing but Chen creeps at this point here. Tower is going to go down, or Aegis get picks up on uh, Shadow Fiend. And he's going to walk in and just tank everything at this point. There's a roar on Misery. Misery's, look, his HP's dropped down very quickly. There's a hook fry by Dendi. Dendi does get the kill against, oh, I think Shadow Fiend's going to get bitten. And he's going to go. I down. think they're finally going to get the Shadow Fiend. You see us trapped in here. His BKB is on cooldown. We see an ultimate and a rot. There's going to be a hook right after that, and he will go down. So they finally managed to pick off that Shadow Fiend despite the Aegis, and they get three other heroes yes. to boot. So uh, despite that hero, that that battle going pretty well for NGW, they managed to draw it out and allow Shadow Fiend to get that uh, get that Aegis. And of course, as you pointed out early on, Shadow Fiend does a lot of damage to Crowdless, and that tower on bottom that took all of that damage from Vino has finally fallen here as the uh, the creeps finally just make it in there, hit it twice, and it dies. And it looks like they're gonna go for the max. I, I think they will. Yeah, there's a mech up here. Glyph is gonna uh -oh. get popped. Shasaka, there's a black hole. He's gonna walk in for a bite. Maybe he's gonna hook him back out into a bite. There's gonna be the bite. BKB not running out. Teleportation comes in right now. Kebab, of course, doing quite a bit of damage despite being a Chen. Here comes Cinder and chasing everyone away. The creep wave comes. That is gonna block the damage. Dendi, don't forget about him. He is gonna turn back and look for more hooks if he's gonna find a chance to do so. And that is gonna be it. I mean, despite the fact that they just won a team fight, MTW, I mean, the Ravage canceled the black hole. They got a big win. They cannot get the Roshan. They finally got the Roshan, but they lost four or five here in that engagement. It was definitely not a, it was a costly endeavor. Yeah, and then their bottom tier three down. Look at their Raxes. The range barracks are almost completely gone. The melees took a decent amount of damage as well. And there are still all five Navi heroes on bottom. They're going to go ahead and find Effing Matt here. Effing Matt, a nice hook from Dendi on Cinder. And Cinder gets shackled as well, so uh, doubly dead. A nice silence on Effing Matt. It looks like he will be going down. Yep. So two heroes dead, and that's going to be the death of this Rax, like no problem. Um, there's too much pushing power. The only heroes alive on the... Uh, for MCW is that Beastmaster, that that uh, Chen, and that Shadowfiend. Now Shadowfiend's BKB is just about to be up on, so that'll help him out a bit, but 5v3 is going to be very hard. You see a buyback from Cinder and immediately in a TPN, an ultimate for Misery, but again he gets focused by the Shadowfiend and goes down. Oh, no, he actually manages to get away. No, he does die. Two raids from Shadowfiend, that would be due. The buyback was costly, but they did get a kill. Hand of God comes in trying to save Funzy. Funzy what are these gets... Shackles? Oh, Pudge is trying to do some heroics. I think Pudge is going to go down as well. Not before he drop off a hook and fight and self-rot the knife. Dendi! Woo! 
Big time play there from Genji. We do have the three on three battle now, but one of those heroes is still Shadow Fiend, and he is still the most powerful hero on the map despite his deaths. We see some TPs down there. Chen shows up, they're gonna back off, so they're end up not getting anything out of this, and this was a nice defense for NTW. It looked really bad for him, and in fact, Arzart's gonna go down as well. He runs and drops an ultimate for no, oh, they're gonna try to get the melee barracks, and they are going to get them on the back of those Enigma wards. Fantastic the, uh, choice there from Navi. Enigma Eidolons is probably what you want. There's an exclamation point being drew on the minimap. <laughs> so Dindy agrees that this is a shocking turn of events. Yes. Uh, range racks, I apologize. I did. Say, I said range, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, that's not anyway, um, so despite what looked like a really a really terrible situation for MTW, they managed to defend, though uh, they're just at the very end. They ended up getting the racks anyway. So uh, at least one racks down does help Nabby out. But I think MTW, despite their early their early successes, uh, are not probably feeling too happy about where they're at right now. Definitely not. They they went for the Roshan. They don't have an Aegis Immortal anymore. Pudge is getting big. He's up to about 2,000 HP, under HP. He's gonna get bigger. Flesh, uh, flesh strength is not max yet. Nothing is safe. Not even the Beastmaster Hawk as Dendi hooks that one up and look at what Dendi's going he's going for the Black King Bar he, he's like forget the Ravage I'm gonna BKB walk in and, and just eat whoever I want to wow. eat he straight up is getting a BKB yep. that's a fantastic choice actually uh, dodges Ravage dodges the Lestrax stun dodges the big old ultimate and the, and the Shadow Fiend the damage from nukes uh, I think the biggest problem is, or Navi has right now is that Misery just cannot survive that Shadow Fiend. You pointed out at the beginning how good Shadow Fiend is going to be against uh, Misery or Karabalus, and it's completely paying off. They continue to assassinate. He drops his ultimate off, and within three seconds, he's he just dies, dead. Yeah. And he's he... just instantly dead. So Karabalus is actually not doing anything for them in this game. It really helps the fact that you have the Beastmaster lock him down. You have the, ooh, someone's teleporting right to the Tier 2 tower. That is the... Get silence right now. We can actually black hole that for the kill. He gets hooked, he gets bitten, but that is initiation. We do have Shaska comes in with a huge Requiem. Denny trying to bite him, but it's not going to be enough. Again, Misery dropping the ultimate. There's a roar canceling Navi, uh, Puppy's ultimate. Immediately, Misery is going to get a kill, but I think he's going to go down to a single raise from Shaska. No, he does get mecked up. And I think for the first time ever, Misery's yeah. actually going to survive a battle. Uh, I would point out that Dindy yet again just just gave Leviathan a blink dagger. He yep. just yanked him in there and let him. He's like, "Thanks, bro!" And then just ravaged and ultimately led to a a nice Shadow Fiend ultimate, ultimate that cost him that uh, that battle. Um, Misery did survive finally though, so that's a small victory, maybe. That's actually kind it of it cost a couple of teammates. <laughs> not too sure if that was a, a pyrrhic victory at best, I guess. Yeah, I, I actually am starting to think now that that Ogre Club is specifically just to get HP because he just continues well, to just perhaps, explode every battle. You know, he, he's just dying every fight, so we never see what the next part of that item is. It's like a mystery that never gets solved. Tune in next time <laughs> on Misery's item choices. He, he, he would have had it too if it weren't for those meddling kids. Yeah, there so, you go. I think MTW. Ah, uh, it's a BKB. Um, their, their Shadow Fiend is currently 12 and 2. Oh, Puppy just walks up and. What? I have poor decision, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say walking up to three MTW heroes and instantly dying was a bad choice. <laughs> that Just was saying. almost as good analysis as uh, last game when hey, you said- Did you know that 5v4 is an advantage? Advantage for Navi when they have a hero up. <laughs> Shocking, I know. Uh, Dindy does get slowed here from that uh, that Viper Pig and we're gonna get a gush as well. He's pretty tank, but I don't think he's gonna be able to tank that Shadow Fiend. He's just throwing up massive damage right now. Uh, about 200 damage and attack coming from that uh, Shadow Fiend, a little bit more than that. He's actually got a Manta style complete now. Yep. Uh, that middle tier one did finally go down. I think MTW, despite, I, I mentioned that they maybe weren't feeling so good, they might actually be able to get in here. Yeah, they're going to get a tier two regar uh, regardless of what Navi's going to do. They're down by two heroes. Manta style not getting cracked yet. Maybe, oh no, it's on cooldown at this point here. The Shrek lasts at that tower. MTW happy with what they're getting. They're going to make sure they defend the bot tower. Let if and don't do anything crazy there. And up, you know, 2K go up on Shadow Fiend. I think he could start getting life steal or whatever else he's looking for. And Sindarin trying to pour it out. Will he pour it out? Yes, he wow. does. That was close. Yeah, I would like to point out though. Um, this is oftentimes we talk about the problems with Shadow Fiend, and I think I'd like to point out that the game is currently 19 to 26. It's not decidedly MTW's game. Like MTW isn't dominating this game in any way. They have a 12 and 2 Shadow Fiend. Most other carries, if they're 12 and 2 at this point, the game is going to be pretty pretty firmly in your favor. Uh, but Shadow Fiend, because of the nature of how squishy he is, even with that BKB and the Manta style, um, it, it's not necessarily a done deal. Whereas if this is like an anti mage, the game's over. Yeah, he's definitely the strongest unit in the map, but I mean, there's still ways to kill him. Yes, uh, absolutely. If, if he's slow on popping that BKB, um, there's definitely ways. Windwinner, I think she wanted. Is she going for Yules? 
I believe she is getting a Yules, yes. Uh, the, the purchase of the Man Stop does help Shadowfiend up uh, quite a bit. Um, through all of this, he just had the BKB, but since he's just now got that, that Manta style, he starts to hit the position where now he has enough HP, and obviously his damage output is really high, so if he gets, you know, as you mentioned, a, a Helm of the Dominator after this, even a Satanic, if he can manage to get to one of those, would, would just wreak serious habit because then he becomes a tank on top of his incredible DPS. Or Mask of Madness, there's that. Uh, I, I don't think he's gonna make a mask. Yeah, I don't think so but either. One eleven said that that's probably not gonna occur. Um, uh oh, puppy looking maybe go after him here. He's, he'd be baiting a bit. He does have his team behind him though. None of them have blink daggers, so it's not much of a bait. It's just it's just called a, a feed. It's the what? It's, you know, maybe he's manning up. He's like, what's up? I'll take all of you. I got three. I got two illusions. There's three of me, kind of. So that's the thing. I think Matt anyway. is uh, looking for a blink dagger, but the the sad thing about him is. By the time he blinks in, he's gonna just blink into two BKBs, and so it's not gonna be too helpful. Well, I mean, if he if he gets a nice initiation and blinks and ravages immediately, perhaps he can get that ultimate off before uh, the ravages. No, occur, the animation. Well, if if perfect reaction is in, in order. Oh, what a big hook! Manta gets pop, and that's a free initiation for him. Dandy down to half HP. Misery pops his BKB. Then he is gonna get up going down to a C raise. C raise. There's a C raise for to kill nicely done here. Venomaster drops his ultimate here. Arzar very low in terms of HP. Gonna go down to a couple raises as well. A hack shadow shot is gonna hit down on two hero. That's uh, the ghost just flying around. A few massive amount of damage. A roar that transcends time and space. That will hit. The hero's misery is going to go down to a couple of stuns. Black Hole does hit, but that was a late Black Hole. There's no more DPS. There's just a carnage going on. There's a double kill on Nygma just off Midnight Pulse, but it's just simply not enough. Arzard surviving to the very end. He's going to go down to a couple more right clicks. Yeah, there is so much damage. There, like, there's literally no HP on any of those MTW heroes. He goes ahead and sends back that Shadow Fiend. Interesting choice there. Um, Cinder and very low as well. The two heroes that got very low off the back of the black hole. Unfortunately, he hit a nice black hole, but his, he had no teammates left when he threw it. He's like, yeah, I got a sweet black hole. And the whole team's like, yeah, we're dead, bro. That's called uh, a ba bad black hole if for anyone. Yeah, it, it didn't quite pay off. Haste for Mart's art here. Maybe managing him to keep him alive. He might try and kite Kabaka. Is he, is he really going to go game? for it? Tesla Fave is... Yeah, that's a bad choice. And he, does, he identifies that maybe it's not the best idea, and he goes yes. and TP's home. So, uh, yeah, I, I broke the uh, I broke the golden rule there. Um, What's the golden when, rule? When the, the battle started, and I just started casting it, even though you were talking. Anyway, uh, we do have Dindy, who's got himself uh, smoked up yet again. He's he's trying his best to just find kills, and despite Dindy's prowess with Pudge, which is exemplary. Uh, he's having a lot of problems here. Every time he hooks somebody, it feels like it's either a Chin Creep or a Leviathan who just ravages, or um, or a Shadow Fiend who drops a BKB in Manta style and just decimates him. Like he's actually having trouble getting actual kills. Up, oh, he's gonna go for Sasuke again. No BKB this. Oh no, BKB is there if he wants it. But he's gonna opt to not use it and just go ahead and wail on Dindy. <laughs> Shadow Fiend's like, "What's up, Dindy? I thought you wanted hugs, bro." And it looks like Shadow Fiend is still wanting more, despite perhaps seeing the Wind Wizard. Of course, he does have backup. And he's pushing the bot lane. Uh, sure, there is a range tracks down, but the range tracks doesn't mean too much of anything. Yeah. And there is a uh, eagle horn now, or eagle song rather, as I guess the the butterfly now or the 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 bow now sings. I don't I don't know how that works. Anyway, uh, he does uh, have that. So a bunch more agility. I'm assume presumably going to be a butterfly. I guess it could be ethereal blade, but that would be a little weird. It's it could be actually. It really yeah, no, could I've be. I've seen ethereal blade shadow I just feel like it'd be very weird for them to pick it up in a competitive match, kind of like this. That's, no, that's mean, one of those things you buy because it's fun. No, you, you definitely need the burst damage to kill down misery. Like he's very tanky. Uh, but once yeah. the BKB is over, you, you just burst him down, or at least try yeah. to. I think the burst uh, Shadow Fiend is just going to actually be attacking. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> because, There's that too. I mean, I mean, if you just buy a butterfly, his attack is actually kind of a burst. I mean, it's just repeated nukes to. Your I face. don't know if if you, uh, as we see a blink roar on Puppy here, he gets four staff out. Misery drops his ultimate. Blink dagger comes in a huge silence. Ultimate's not going to hit anything on Shastika. Ah, that's not a good ultimate. Pudge gets a hook right now. It's going to bring a Beastmaster down. That was a good team fight for the start here. As we see now, AA comes in. Misery still doing some big damage. Travis only going to hit on just one. Misery's ghost is going to. Just kill effing mad to hook now hooks misery backwards. That is the worst hook of the game here, and that's gonna allow everyone to run away. Wow. Oh, poor Dindy. He has been every hook he throws has just been caught, like ineffective for his team. That said, that was easily the worst battle for MTW so far. Uh, as you mentioned, Shadow Fiend's ultimate hit nothing. Uh, Ravage only hit one hero. So they used their two big ultis and actually didn't get a whole lot off of that. Now it looks like they're going to go for a rabbit or a, a Roshan here. Is Navi and it has potential. If they pick up this this Roshan, maybe they can get in the base and maybe do a little work on that melee racks on bottom. I but, wonder who's going to so, get the Aegis. No one's actually good with the Aegis. My guess is going to be. Uh, you just walk him in and just like bait out 
stuns. He's tanky. Oh, he's gonna get a hook on Shadow Fiend. He is in there by himself. The blink. No grabs. Gotta keep my shots. Guys, got oh, pop the BKB. But is he gonna do enough damage? Yeah, someone pick up the Aegis for the love of God. There's a black hole. Shaska focus him down. No, Aegis still alive right now. Someone got sent back. Effing Mads very low. There's a Funzy blinking. He's gonna drop off Roar. He does. And it looks like Venomancer is gonna go down here. Puppy getting war trapped by his own teammate. Cannot walk up on the high ground here. Trying to run. Misery's <laughs> ultimate is out. He's gonna just port out Cinder very low in terms of HP as well. Roshan bashes him. He is still in the pit. He's gonna get sent back. Roshan is just a mega oh. boss in this team fight. He'd be like, yo, bro, you guys want hugs? Yeah, Why th no these have been crazy team fights left and right. Like, there's been nice initiations on both sides and didn't pay off. Didn't he hit a nice hook on the Shadow Fiend? Unfortunately for him, Shadow Fiend just two tank at this point. Obviously, uh, he has that butterfly now complete. And coupled with that man style, he just dropped his man style, was very tank, took down Dindy in, in no time. Um, and obviously he turned that battle around a little bit. And then right after that, we saw a Ravage, or I mean, sorry, Ravage was on cooldown. I think, did he crack Ravage that battle? No, he did not have Ravage. Yeah, it was on cooldown, so didn't end up doing anything. And then Puppy dropped a nice black hole, and then immediately got blocked off by his own teammate. So kind of awkward battles left and right here, though Misery does go ahead and pick up that Aegis. Yep, I mean, of course, Crabless is their kind of the biggest DPS here, uh, dealer, but when you die with the... Uh, when you die and respawn with the Aegis, you don't get your ghost back. So it's kind of, I mean, you, all you, you're doing after you revive is your your nuke, which is not that much, and I guess your silence, which is just pretty annoying. But well, the upside to it is if he does get caught somehow, he doesn't have to just immediately drop his ultimate. He can wait for him to die and then resurrect and then cast it. Right. So that gives him a little bit. Tide level is apparently higher than Pudge's level. That is interesting, actually. That is um, sad. Yeah, it is kind of sad. Levy is just about 16, though, so 36 minutes in, 35 and a half minutes in, he's about to get level 3 Ravage. Uh, obviously, just does a lot more damage. Now, Dindy, he's, he's trying his best. He's still got that Mithril Hammer in the base. He has yet <laughs> to actually complete that BKB. He's, he's having a rough game. This is not... Look, if you ask Dindy, he said, hey, how was that Pudge game? He's going to he'd probably say, total crap, man. Wonderful. Spectacular. Yeah, wonderful. Perfect. Spectacular. Not the Light of Heaven response. <laughs> Completely. Exactly no, Light of Heaven just got the voice song just for the modern regeneration. Going back to the force staff, which I actually like this choice. I mean, when someone gets roared, hey, push him out. Yeah, and he can still turn that voice song into a hex after that. So, right. um, if the game goes that long, I mean, I, I think he would actually be delighted if they could if he could make it to a hex. Honestly, Ooh, misery is going to pick up a Yule Scepter. I love that choice. One of my favorite items. You pop your ultimate. They focus you. You cyclo, and they're like, oh, can't kill you. Absolutely. And they got to hang out in that ultimate for quite a little while. Um, now Sasuke, of course, with that fin completed butterfly, and he's even uh, gone to hell and picked up a a Morbin mask, which will be a helm of the Dominator. Who's There's heart? also a Alpha Wolf being a do what? Sorry, uh, Puppy's trying to get a heart. He had to go for Shiva's, but he's gonna say no. I'm just gonna get play him out for HP. He's gonna just tank up. Interesting choice. Um, yeah, he's actually got a Reaver. Yeah, uh, the Vin on Booster's the on the courier too. I think that's his. Okay, so he is interesting choice. If the, he already has the Vit booster, he could have just finished the heart, but he goes ahead and finishes the play mail. Well, that is very no, odd. No, he got it? the play mail like an hour ago, as we see. Punch, oh, okay, I, I didn't see it. Blows. Oh, what? I didn't see that. So sorry, I was too busy trying to figure out what Puppy's doing. Puppy, I mean, getting a heart or getting a complete Shiva or getting a hex. What is the correct choice? Uh, on Puppy, I think getting the heart's fine. I mean, there, there, there's there's upsides to both. But once you already have that Reaper, you're just gonna finish the heart, obviously. Right. I mean, he's not he's not making a satanic or anything. Um, I think Shivas is fine, but he is he is having problems with just pure damage. I mean, the armor reduction from Shadow is a problem, so I think having that plate mail is fine. So he's already kind of counteracted that a little bit. Um, but just pure just purely from a damage tanking standpoint, he really does need more HP. So I think the heart's a, a fine choice, though. This means that he does he's not gonna have a BKB anytime soon, and the blink dagger is probably never in his future. So. Some big item progression from the Dire Squad. Okay, we have Acceptor finished on Cinderin. Uh, Butterfly, Helm, BKB, Manta up on Shadow Fiend. He is a scary mofo. Double blink, one on Funzy, one on uh, Effing Mad. Mac, uh, Mech, not Mac. Mech is finished on Kebab, and he looks like he's going to go for a Force Staff. Perhaps an Acceptor. We'll see what he ultimately ends up going in. MTW feeling the fact that they have advantage now. Going to go on the yes. offensive. Shadow Fiend has now reached that point where you are genuinely afraid of him as a hero. Uh, he does some serious damage output. He's just about capped on items. He's gonna be. He's gonna turn that Hell of the Dominator into a Satanic, and then after that, he can basically um, sell his treads and make BOTs and get one more item, which will typically be something like an MKB. Um, we see another hook from Diddy not catching anything. We see a blink from Effing Mad. We see a roar on Diddy. Diddy has finally completed his BKB. Unfortunately, 
Roar goes right through that, and down he will go to the pure damage of... Yep, finally does get that down. Major goes ahead and cracks his ultimate. He's going to need to cycle himself. He's taking a bunch of damage here. Oh, there he's cycling just, just in time. We see a black hole from Puppy only hitting the Shadow Fiend. Uh, we see a Ravage from uh, uh, Effing Mad hitting two heroes. Down goes massive heroes for uh, Navi, and I believe this... Could potentially be a rack. I think so, right? That has to be a rack. Shadow Fiend's so tank at this point, but he is very, very low. There's no mech. Mech's coming off cooldown. Kind of got it coming off. They're going to just back off? Are you serious? Interesting choice. Now, Misery, of course, still had his ultimate, but his ultimate just now ran out. Yeah. Um, Rasha is did. not up anytime. Yeah, Rasha is not up anytime soon. I feel like I was maybe a bit overcautious from MTW. I understand that they, you know, they feel like they're in a good position. There's no need to rush it, but at the same time, you got to take your advantages when you get them. I mean, it's not necessarily like a team like Navi. At any given point, you can have a poor battle and just you can lose the game. Um, Navi is certainly capable, despite being this far behind, of still still taking it. Well, uh, you know, the only reason that I could agree with the decision is well, Cinder made that decision, so it, it's got to be something, right? Yes, that is true. I mean, we're not Cinderin. We're not Cinderin. Yes. Despite our expert analysis, Cinderin's uh, pretty bright when it comes to the whole Dota thing. So, um, Kabat, meanwhile, has still just got a staff wizardry, so no hack sticker. Uh oh, what's he got? Does he have an item? He is. Oh, what did he do? He got he got a tango. Wow, how anticlimactic was that? <laughs> I don't know. What Cinder, he got. meanwhile, has got his axe scepter yes. complete. He's also got a BKB. He's got those arcane boots. He's got bracer and another thousand gold, so he can finish himself a Django if he so chose, uh, or probably more likely just saves that up for uh, for buybacks. Um, it, just if in case they lose a battle, wants to be able to defend off of that, I would guess. As his next item probably isn't going to be that important. I mean, he is a Leshrac. Pass this unless he's getting a hex. There's not a lot more. Navi, what the only way they could win this game is if they hook a couple guys and catch them without a buyback, and hopefully they could win a five v four. Even yes. with a five v four, I'm not sure if they have the advantage anymore. So to counteract that, just save your gold for buyback, as yeah. as it looks like he is yeah. doing. Um, yeah, I mean they do have Dindy, or they do have uh, Pudge, which of course does allow the opportunity to um, you know isolate people. Unfortunately, Shadow Fiend, if you hook him, I honestly I think that helps him. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's why. I was BKB's like, dances and kills everybody. I, that's why I said puppy needed a hex. I mean, you hook him, you hex him before he does anything. That's a for sure kill. Or you just hex him and then walk up to him and stun. I, I feel like they need some kind of thing to to combat BKB. Uh, as awkwardly I, I, as that I, sounds. I think he can BKB when the hook is hitting him, right? Like, can he BKB no, you're while, paused. while traveling? You're paused. When you're like, you can't do anything. You lose control of your hero when you're. Oh, okay, so I'm, so he can theoretically get a hex off before that. Though it's, it would be very difficult. That is that is definitely an option. Yeah. Anyway, it looks like Navi's going to gather and maybe go for something here. I, I think they feel like they're not in a great Ooh. spot. They're going to go ahead and smoke gang here. Right under a hawk, so... Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate for them. MTW knows what's up. They're going to go ahead and just hang out together and not really risk this. Shadow Fiend's going to stay on the far side, where they assume the enemy is going to be coming from the other side. But actually, now he's going to go ahead and use the smoke to hang out in the middle. They, they have no idea they were they were actually found out there. Uh-oh. I think Mac could blink in and just get a five-man ravage. Of course, now they do see the dire side coming along. I pretend they don't know. Ooh, Ooh. that hook! If it got Lesh, that would have been that would have been that would have been something. I mean, obviously he can beat KB, so he's not just going to instantly die. But uh, that probably actually doesn't help him because that leads to a blink ravage and just a big time damage. Well, Lesh shouldn't have buyback if you could go for. Yeah, it's close. We have a blink roll on Pudge. They want Pudge first. Not too sure why. Black hole on the two most important hero ravage that is going to cancel it. And now Pudge is going to come in and bite Shastika. But really, where's the DPS coming out? The ghost is just doing whatever they can. Simply not enough at this point. Cinder very low. He will end up going down to the ghost. Misery pick up that kill. And looks like he is, the ghosts are still doing some big damage on Shastika. He does have cycle. No, he's going to pop the drum and try to run. Turns around with the nuke. He, is he going to get the kill? He's going to get sent back. The life steal is just simply too much. And it looks like he is and I'm going down, but he will buy back Kebab, still taking down from the Ghost Misery. We'll get a full heal from that. That was a one team fight from the Radiant side. Triple kill on the Light of Heaven, a Shackle shot, and got to get a latch on the man style. But Shasuka, despite not having souls coming up, he is just still right clicking too much. Navi Puppy is gonna get a kill, but will he make it out there alive? Looks like he will. Yeah, I actually want to point out, they did a really nice job of just removing Shaska for as long as they could from the first battle. Um, he obviously got BK, or he got ultimated by Dindy, followed it up with a, a ultimate from Enigma just to slow him down as much as possible. Then he got hit with a Silence, I believe, and then they followed it up with a Cyclone from the Necrobolus, just removing him from the battle as long as they possibly could, and it allowed them to take down two of his teammates, and that in turn gave Misery just enough time for his ultimate to wail on him and actually took him down and forced him to buy out. So. Yeah, but despite all of that, even 
at the end when he was 1v4, his, he was life dealing against yeah. War Hero and survived for it took like a good, lot of work to actually get him down. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's they need a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, Pudge again, following the trend, ho hooking more centaur creeps, or Chen creeps, a little bit mad about this game. And it feels bad when you play a Pudge in, in like a 44 minute game like this, you, you start to feel like you're not really contributing a lot to your team. And, like if you don't hit your cooks, that's that's it. You, you don't do too much in a fight. Ugh, yes, that is all true. Um, sorry, a uh, little tired here. I, I, my, I'm out of coffee. I, I got to make some coffee after this game if we do go to a third, uh, which I'm kind of excited about casting if we do get to a third. It looks like, oh, ours, ours aren't going to go ahead and drop a roar. Unfortunately, that doesn't really help out uh, when Shaska just ultimates. Or, no, he actually oh, gets hooked. Oh, oh. He did go for a roar, but I believe, uh, no, there's no roar. It's actually on cooldown. Diddy's still going to just die to the right click, though. Uh, Shadow Fiend's damage up is just too great. Mizzer goes ahead and drops down an ultimate. It is going to take down... No, it's not going to take down Kill-Off. He's actually going to manage to survive that. So, uh, he... Krobolus does end up losing that Aegis. And as you pointed out, no souls or no ultimates for her, which means she's just got to run away. She does drop a BKB, but this isn't going to stop anything. Look, Effing Mad's going to go ahead and continue chasing after the Light of Heaven. I think he's going to be able to get away, perhaps, unless we see some more blink action. Nope, that is going to be all, all she wrote for that battle. So... Yeah, we, I, Shadow Fiend is probably just too fat at this point. Uh, 2.7k gold as well, so he can buy it if he wants to. He's getting close to a Satanic. Um, this was, I, I think Shadow Fiend will actually, uh, despite our, our our apprehension in the beginning going, has really uh, made this game. Yeah, Shadow Fiend is strong, a smart counterpick. That's why we, we talked about how Cinder, and he's, he's a captain that he's not afraid to pick untraditional hero. If it works in the lineup, it works in the lineup. Uh, this yeah. game, he picked it for the big burst damage to kill uh, the Kroblis. And uh, you know, strong physical DPS. Look at how quickly Misery drops down, and Misery did die. And I think they're going to take down the Min Rax and actually get a series. Game three. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we're going to finally see a game three. I actually haven't casted a game three in the Premier League, despite casting like six or seven series or eight series now. So uh, finally going to actually get a game three. I'm pretty excited about that. Now, um, what another thing I wanted to mention is not what are these shackles? It's such a joke. Look, somebody at Valve fix this. All right, this is retarded. <laughs> Well, they're gonna keep on chasing. Uh, well, the base is not down yet. They're gonna kill Shasika. Maybe they're gonna kill Chen first. Maybe no, they're gonna spare the Chen. Look at Lifesteal. He's gonna try to Lifesteal. No! Ooh, when Have we spoke too there, soon? Preventing him from actually getting that last hit. Uh, Winner dodging that and perhaps nabbing. See, I mentioned this early on about the attack. I don't know what you're mentioning, but your Skype call is breaking up. Misery is going on the bot lane. He has Exorcism. Nebula has disconnected. We'll bring him back to the intense action in just a bit. BKB is up. He could just BKB and just walk right in and tank that one. He's trying right now. Ours are in position. I think they're going to get the Rax as a full minute without Shadow Fiend being alive. Yeah, Exorcism going to drop. They're going to take at least a melee Rax. Navi's not out of it at this point here. They're going to switch down to the mid Rax as well. Nebula has reconnected, but I'm not going to tap out to get him back. The action is just too intense. Tower is going to go down to the mid lane as well. 50 seconds to Shadow Fiend, who has been winning really hard. His item choice was an ultimate orb. I'm not sure if that was the biggest mistake of his life. It's a pretty big one. I, I, what I was talking about is when, when you're against a team like Navi, if you make a big mistake, they're capable of just ending the game on the back of that. I, I was talk, I was referring to that bottom push where they didn't go in and get any Raxes, and now they're going to get Rax on that middle lane. It looks like they're going to go up top, and there's still 25 seconds on Shadow Fiend. MimTW has got to be kicking themselves right now over this. This is, this is, it's not over yet. I mean, it's still going to be difficult, but this is Navi is sort of with this right now. And they're gonna ignore Cinder. No, they are gonna kill Cinder Ooh. very quickly with a big hook on blind range. Dandy working on that melee racks. You gotta keep in mind, even if Shadow Fiend comes back, his Requiem of Soul is not gonna do too much damage. It looks like Dandy warding everyone off. That is the fifth Rax that's going down. The sixth one is gonna go down as well. Mega creeps. Oh my goodness. Navi, you are too good. Look at this. This is ridiculous. We see a roar from Funzi on Misery. It looks like they might get him. There is a gush. We see a nice venomous venom ulti there. A lot of having a bunch of damage from Shadow Fiend. Uh, unfortunately, through all of this, there are now Mega Creep spawns, so uh, even if they get all these heroes down, it's going to be very difficult for them to now push. Well, a couple of heroes are dead. MTW has one shot. They have one shot with a couple of heroes dead. They got to just go straight mid, leave a couple back. I mean, leave Chen back defend. He got Mega Creeps on his side now, right? I guess that's one of the slight benefits of having Chen and Mega Creeps going against you. You get big creeps yourself. You just go big guess, mid and, and just push. I guess. Push. It looks like MTW may be going for it, but Dindy and uh, Puppy are not backing up right now. It looks like maybe they want to poach a kill here and try and just stymie any like any and all uh, like thoughts MTW have of, of maybe rushing down here. And indeed, we're going to see no pushes. So I feel like 
You know, MTW has a lot of damage on that Shadow Fiend. They're very fat. They have been winning this game for a long time. So even though they have these Mega Creeps now, um, we may be in for like a, a 15 to 20 minute siege here, potentially, uh, where they just kill all of these and, and Navi have actual troubles getting in. <laughs> Well, uh, that is going to give Navi all the advantage in the world in terms of grabbing for ages and cheese, farming over the map. It is an uphill battle at this point here, and I'm going to reiterate what you said. That push down here where it was three hero dead, Shadowfiend was red. Uh, they have four heroes alive on MTW. They decided not to push. In the late game situation, Shadowfiend felt he was had the game in control. We thought, we both thought, they, as they are pushing up the hill, they had the game in control. Shadowfiend bought an ultimate war, did not save for buyback. Yeah, that's a big mistake. We, we also mentioned earlier on about how the only way they can really lose this is if they have a death like that and Navi just gets in and gets a bunch of Raxes. We, we said, that, right? The only way yeah, that and, Shadow... And we mentioned they're going to hang on to and save buyback yep. for just that purpose. But he didn't! He bought an ultimate orb! <laughs> is the 10 stats really worth it, bro? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. Well, I mean, again, Puppy and, and his squad has not won it yet. Until that throne goes down, the game is going on. And it looks like we're going to have a big steal. Can this one turn around? No, Arzar is getting ready. He's getting the war trap. A building block. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's Preventing it. Preventing the uh, the blink dagger from Levy, and that means that this Aegis will be going down. There's nobody that's going to be able to get in there and actually get this thing. Levy's going to be forced to back up and maybe jump down from the bottom side. It will be what he's going to do. We're going to see a leap in. Here's the Ravage. It catches Light of Heaven and a few more. Aegis does go down and gets picked up by Shin. Uh oh. Right. You get a little steal there, but we see a nice ultimate from Enigma catching all five heroes. Sindarin is going to be able to get away there, but no, oh, he gets cycled. Funzi does go down. Shaska is going to die, but no, through all of it, the Mega Creeps take down the the, uh, the dire ancient and what wow. a fantastic game this was. Wow, a four step down the, the low ground, get the chance to steal the ages. <laughs> but ultimately, that was enough. This game is a roller coaster ride. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. The last 10 minutes of this were amazing. That was incredible. I cannot believe Navi pulled this thing out. I mean, we talked about it. We thought it was possible. I didn't feel like it was actually going to happen, but I did mention that it had capacity and we talked about the mistakes MTW made. Just a little bit. It doesn't take many mistakes to lose to Navi. You can have a huge advantage, which they had a pretty solid advantage. They made one, two mistakes. I, I can think of two very specific mistakes and that lost them the game. I'm speechless. Clearly. I'm not. I can talk all day, hey. bro. Okay. So, we're not going to get an AM3. I'm bummed out. These games were actually really good. I would have totally liked to see an MTW take that one. Um, that said, I mean, Navi, they did lose those uh, those games yesterday. They had, they are 6-4, and four, so now they're, they're pulling themselves back up. I think they're, you know, back into a few more wins here. That said, um, they don't look unbeatable, right? They don't look... Um, just completely and utterly dominant as they as they looked maybe two or three weeks ago, right? Yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, sh I don't want to take anything away from Na'Vi. They play well, but MTW lost the game. Na'Vi didn't win Ooh. that one. I agree. I, I think MTW had that game won, and it's not many teams that get... We, we always talk about how Na'Vi has two kinds of games. The games where they win the early game and it's over, and the games where they don't win the early game and then you get a real game, right? I think this one was actually a case where MTW had everything they needed. They just did everything right except for those two things, and those two things, that's all it takes. They were clutched the whole game, except yeah. the last moment. Except when it was necessary. Yep, yeah, like LeBron. Anyways, welcome, uh, thank you for this broadcast. It was, it was such a good game. Tomorrow we got more games heading your way. I'll quickly tap out and check out what it is, but thank you for joining the broadcast. It was a great game. hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, Luminous and Nebula signing out to you guys. All right, let's see what we got tomorrow. I was gonna say, I was, I was hoping you'd give me an opportunity there to go, hey LeBron, you wanna buy a ring for a dollar? And then you could be like, oh bro, I only got three quarters. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, for the matches tomorrow, we have um, M5 versus COG at 17 CET, and Dare versus Navi at 20. Ooh. Dare's I'm actually looking pretty good now with the new roster. I believe that is LD tomorrow. Yeah, and you gotta keep in mind, Dare actually beat Navi yesterday. We got ourselves a game. We do. Yeah. We do have a game. So, uh, man, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about watching these things. So, yeah, Dare versus Nabby coming up tomorrow. Now, Nabby has now, are they still, what's the record? They're still 6-4 right? and four four because, you know, it pushed out to. No, no, they're I mean on TPL. Are yeah, they, they are 3-0. Three three no? No. Um, okay, so they, they now jump ahead of MTW, who's now 3-1. No, one. M MTW, well. It depends on what happened tomorrow. Navi could actually lose, and they were right, right. Those. But as far as the loss column goes, Navi is now technically leading. Yes. Okay. So Navi has now jumped ahead of that, but 
Derek can easily pull that one back. Yep, they can. Alrighty. Uh, you still streaming? I presume. I uh, uh, not for long. I think we're done. Any last words, Nebula, before we totally end this crazy broadcast? Ah, oh, man. MTW, only three quarters. <laughs> only three quarters. I think that sums it all up. Thank you guys for watching. It was a great game. Great to have you guys supporting us, supporting DotaCommentaries.com as well as TPL2. And hopefully you guys will support us tomorrow as well. Uh, until next time, Luminous, DotaCommentaries.com, Nebula, signing off to you guys.